We are back with episode nine of season four of We Do A Little Pod. And before we jump in, I want to highlight some big news we announced earlier this season. Season four is officially powered by Arbitrum and our content is now redistributed across Rug Radio and Decrypt's platforms. Annie and I have been massive fans of Arbitrum since they launched and both of us invested in Off-Chain Labs' Series B back in 2021. This is a full circle moment for us and we couldn't be happier to partner with Arbitrum for this season. If you've never felt the frictionless transactions at lightning speeds on the world's most centralized L2, what are you waiting for? Head on over to portal.arbitrum.io to check out their growing ecosystem where you can explore 600 plus apps and even participate in missions to earn points. Without further ado, let's dive into this week's episode. In this week's episode, we sit down with Vinny Hager. Vinny is an artist from Baltimore who focuses on a wide variety of mediums spanning from digital art to streetwear and even tables and stools. His style is immediately recognizable with a mixture of glyphs and objects, including his signature flowers, eyes, water drops, smileys, hearts, and of course, envelopes. We dive into Vinny's morning routine, the evolution of his artistic style, skateboarding, how he got into NFTs, so much more. As always, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. And EDs and guests may be invested in companies or tokens talked about in this podcast. This is Andy. Yeah, I'm Bruce. We are here with another special episode of We Do a Little Pod live from New York. We're January 2024 here with our good friend Vinny Hagar. He just made the trip yeah. from Baltimore to New York just for this pod. Just for Nothing this. Nothing else. I'm going right back home. Going right back home right after this. So mm-hmm. Vinny, thanks for taking the time to come hang with us. And Anytime. how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing lovely. Thanks for having me. I haven't uh, been on a podcast for a little bit, so I'm excited to like talk and be social and yeah, chat dude. art and everything. So yeah, yeah it's thanks, been a, thanks for a having long, me. you know, kind of quiet, quote unquote, bear market. Uh, where people we've been on spaces a ton, but mm-hmm. over the last year, not as much. A lot of spaces in 2021, a little less in 2022. I think even more in more. 2024. I know. Yeah. I feel like I'll be on more spaces in 2024. Agreed. Yeah, I've been listening to, I'm trying to get back on like my morning routine coffee and like just listen to spaces for like four hours until noon <laughs> and then the day kind of st- starts what, what, from there. But what does your morning routine look like? I've been waking up pretty late recently, which kind of, so the other day I woke up, it was like 1230 and I oh, slept wow. in that, that long in so late. long. Yeah, yeah. I was no alarm. I was just kind of scared. I, was like, <laughs> I feel like when that happens though, I just take it as like a sign from my body. Like, all right, you're pretty fucking yeah, tired. Take a little like, rest. Yeah. You needed it. Yeah. And I was like, it's winter. Like, who cares? I can sleep. I don't really have anything to, to yeah. do. Pressing, so. But it was weird. Um, so I've been trying to kind of fix that and staying up late and kind of addicted to like Pinterest and Twitter and stuff mm-hmm. even more so now. So a lot of art stuff, but yeah, coffee in the morning, go through emails, work on all some the art stuff, stuff, all life admin. Um, and yeah, then, then everything's usually off to the races. Depends on the yeah. day, but mostly art. Do you What's normally your go-to have, morning coffee? Oh, just like Folgers black. Nice. Make it at home. Do you um, have like set times you set aside? Like at noon, mm. I'm going to go on do not disturb for four hours and just I try. create. Yeah. I try to put the phone away in the other room and just, uh, have whatever I'm working on that, that day there, try to limit distractions and things like that. Two cups of coffee a day. Try not to drink coffee after like 5 p.m. I've been like setting these rules for myself. No, no. I, uh, so in I the new year, I'm like up, trying, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's been good. Yeah, I've, I've been feeling pretty uh, content lately. Not, not in a rush. I'm like, this is perfect. Like I have a bunch of projects that I want to work on and ideas and stuff for the new year. So I'm like, this, this is great. It feels all as well. How have you felt like um, over the last year compared to your first year in all this? Like mm. uh, the first year, I feel like was super hectic. We were, you know, building the bridge as we crossed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think the last, like when I say first year, I mean like, you know, end of 2020, beginning of 2021, mm-hmm. end of 2021. And then now I'm asking like the bear market, like how have you uh, adjusted throughout mm. that time? Yeah, I, don't, I think it was pretty natural. I think in general, I was just always addicted to making artwork, no matter what the markets Rain were shine. really doing. Um, and I wasn't really trying to sell a lot of things during the. I think I did, you know, I did my diary collection release, mm-hmm. and that was kind of only the the main thing. I did a couple brand partnerships, so I wasn't really worried about 
marking conditions for like selling or I'm not much of a trader or anything like that. So I was like full gung ho, tr uh, traveling a lot, art stuff, conventions were still fun to go to, VCon. What were some of your favorite uh, conventions or art shows? Oh, uh, I mean, VCon was, was VCon pretty is sick. The shit. <laughs> VCon's great. Yeah. Was, are you, um, did you, were you, uh, have you been to both of them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got I was the only opportunity the... to speak at both, which nice. was great. And then saw all the friends. And yeah, I was only at the really Minneapolis cool. one, mm -hmm. but. Man, it was just really it's well cool. done, like comparatively to other conferences. That's what people say, right? It's <laughs> yeah. like, well, the idea is that it just contains everybody in one place. Was that yeah. your first time in Indy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I yeah. feel like everybody <laughs> who was there, I was like, have you been to Indy before? They're like, never. That's no why would you, where I am. Unless you're going to the NFL draft, why would you ever go to Indy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or the race. Yeah, so. true. But right, it yeah, was the enough. same for Minneapolis. Like, mm -hmm. I would never have went to Minneapolis. But that's also a cool thing about VCon. They brought us to these obscure places. That well, then yeah. this one is in L.A., other exciting one. So it's different. Like they yeah. they went from, hey, let's take over a small town that, but not small. Okay, that was not the right word. There's cap small. capital like city, small city. Yes, let's take it over so that we're the number one show mm -hmm. in town. Whereas now, you know, I'm curious in L.A. Um, you know, I'll go if I'm a speaker or not because mm -hmm. I like L.A. Right. But I um, am curious how like attendance will do. Because mm. I think there's a good chance, like people just go out to LA and they're like, "Why don't we just, just like party? Why don't we just go, like hang go, out? <laughs> go, yeah." Because that happens to me every yeah. time I've went to LA for uh, what they call it, Outer Edge mm -hmm. or NFT, NFT LA. LA or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious. Mm. Um, for yeah, that. I think they're trying maybe to like end with a bit. Like this is their third one. Technically, it has. It's oh, like yeah, the last the one. Years. Oh, is it the last? Like they said, they, said they were going to do three, but... no matter what. I'm okay. pretty sure. Um, so maybe they're like, let's do LA, let's do a big one. But my thing was they did Indianapolis, Minneapolis, and I was like, you guys should do Annapolis, which is in Maryland, yeah, which is by yeah. me. I'm like, come on, let's. It's take... in the name. Yeah, and it's like small town, you know. Do cool. you think they make money on VCon? Sorry, I'm definitely going to get off topic here. Mm. Oh yeah, no, that's maybe good. they have to. I think that would be the goal, right? Well, yeah, because well, like normally conferences print money, mm. but like I feel like Gary like goes so over the top with a lot of stuff that I almost wouldn't be shocked if they just kind of broke even. Like, I don't know. I don't know how much they make in ticket sales. Probably like got like some NFT good deals NYC. on like the stadiums and stuff. Yeah, like, probably. Like, definitely. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see like their breakdown, but they made a lot from minting things. Yeah. And like, I'm assuming even cause a lot of the tickets they give out are like, Hey, you own a thing. Yeah. Like, here's the ticket. That, that's kind of what I was thinking is like, I wonder how much of the, revenue from those things was front loaded in the sales which is why they were like we're gonna do three and then like maybe it won't make sense for them to do more because they don't actually make it's money like on it kind of yeah thing. versus like like nft nyc every year prints millions of dollars of people buying tickets which Have is you insane ever to been me to the nft nyc I, conference i went last year my friend max spoke uh -huh. and i just got there right when he was speaking because i was like oh, i'll come and support you he like got me and we were like in the tunnels where like the green room is i was like <laughs> in the tunnels and then we like came up and there's like nobody out there there's like yeah. 10 people scattered about uh, this is at like 2 p.m. on the Wednesday or whenever it was. I mean, and that's I was, like a pretty good time. Like, it's yeah. not like the 8 a.m. slot where <laughs> right. everyone's that was over my, yeah. in the audience. That was what my speaking yeah. time and was. And I think the first year I went, I just went and got a cup of coffee because I didn't know really what to do and listened to a couple of people speak. And it was a good turnout then, but yeah, I think it's dwind I think dwindling it's a little. keep going down. Like, I advise everybody and, you know, probably uh, it might be rude, but fuck it. I tell people... <laughs> You should never buy a ticket to the NFT NYC conference in particular. You should just hang out with people. Come and go events. to like the fun side stuff. Yeah, and like the gallery so many stuff, like artists you know. have either um, group exhibition, open studio, or there's an open studio. There's like you know the Fibo paint parties are always mm -hmm. fun. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do and not need. Like the tickets are hundreds of dollars. I thought they were like like five hundred dollars. Like yeah, yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, they're really expensive. Uh, the what was I going to say? Uh, so this year, you did the diary project. We did that in September. In September. Last year, and then yeah. you've been, like, you said you haven't had any major releases or collections. Like, how have you used this year to, like, experiment? Or mm. uh, I know before we went live, you were talking about checking out LA studios. Oh, but like, how yeah. have you used this uh, year to, like, either experiment set up new lifestyle mm -hmm. stuff or like yeah look at the bigger picture because it's yeah. like you don't need to do a drop every month mm -hmm. you don't need to put out something immediately and market it but you right. can like take a three thousand or thirty thousand foot view of the space and yeah i think there's a lot of things to touch on there um i think the basis of like my creative experimentation and you know artwork is rooted in like um the opposite of artist block like oh there's almost have too many things that i'd like to do and I think I've turned that into being like, okay, 
let's just do like a couple things a year. Like I can plan out my year and um, try to focus on the things that I'm really passionate about and whether that's like one or two kind of collections with a concept, maybe some one-on-ones and some brand partnerships and then Mm -hmm. some activations in real life. I'm like, okay, that seems like a standard thing. Um, especially traveling the last three years and, you know, I kind of have a bit of a calendar in mind now. And I'm like, okay, I've never really it's had like you're that. you're coming into the year and it's like, you can yeah. almost map it out. Yeah. Like uh, Art Basel's at the end of the year. Uh, yeah. And FTNYC. Yep. Is in April or Are wherever. you going to any of the overseas stuff? Uh, trying to plan Paris right now. I'm tr- trying to do like an activation there, but, uh, don't know just yet. When yeah. is that supposed to be? February 28th. Oh, that's it, it I, will not, I will not be it, it overlaps with Denver. Uh, kind no. of. Because um, Denver, Denver starts, this is a leap year. The only Whoa. reason I know that is because Denver starts on February 29th. And I like thought it was a typo at first. And I was like, oh, wait, no. It's a leap year. Interesting. So it's really close. But the Denver crowd is much more like dev, tech, uh, more tech centric. Like it's definitely not like, it's not there NFT will thing. be people there from NFTs, but it's not for like mm. NFTs. Is that's consensus or something? No, 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 no. Consensus is in um, is it May? I think it's in May. It's in Austin. Yeah. Mm. So that's is it a, in Austin again? I I, I think so. The okay. one thing I want to do, I want to go to Marfa this year. Dude. That's my main. That's like I do not want to miss. So that. this was my first <laughs> Marfa, mm. and I cannot say enough good things about it. Right. That's all I hear. There was not more than, I think our block said there's like 600 people who went through and mm. like signed up like there's 600 people i could track but it didn't feel like that like mm-hmm. it felt like there was like 100 people which is nice it's like i mean i probably didn't see a bunch of people mm. but it was uh the most like vibes based event i have ever been to mm. yeah I and get- it's not as bad like i had this idea in my head that it would be a pain in the ass to get mm. the marfa why because it's in the middle of nowhere i was like oh i don't want to fly to el paso and drive <laughs> three hours but right. Because we have to fly from Columbus to Dallas, Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth, El Paso, and then drive three hours from El Paso in a rental car. Mm. It's not that bad. Like it, it's all in the adventure. So I would definitely highly recommend go. And then also, it's kind of a pain in the ass because everyone in the Art Blocks community overwhelms Marfa as soon as it's announced. Mm. So it's like, you know, I thankful for Redbeard, friends with him. He gets the Airbnb quickly. I'm in like a group and it's like, okay, I know I have a slot in this house, mm. but my advice would be like, as soon as they, when, I, like, do we know what month it is? I don't think we know exactly when it is. I'm assuming it's going to be between October and September. Cool. But so here's what we do. We corner the market. On all the Airbnbs. Airbnbs we we book them all. And then we do secondaries. <laughs> yeah. We say, Oh, you want to stay here? All right. It's going to be $500. No, no, no. You know what we do? We do a Dutch auction with a refund. <laughs> Starting at five thousand a night, mm. <laughs> and it goes it's down. Just, it's very interesting. Yeah, I, I think this could be really good I think for. There's us. a way to gamify it. Yeah, at least. But uh, I would definitely recommend, even if you don't know anybody, like if yeah. someone's listening to this, they don't know anybody in the generative art community. Like you'll feel so accepted when you just walk in. Um, mm. Especially like, don't want to keep talking about Marfa, but I will, uh, just because it was so much fun. They had this whole artist activation area where you mm. would go in and you would get a, um, they call it a Marfa mesh, but I think it might've used like IYK's backbone, but you basically got a lanyard that you would be able to tap on other people. And then you had a generative art piece that was changing based on like who you tapped. Basically you would tap someone, take a picture of, I was trying to take pictures of like their colorful clothes. Like if you had a patch that was really bright Mm -hmm. or you had some really cool shoes, like I would take a picture of that, but take the colors from your picture. And then that would, be combined with the location of where the tap was Whoa. and it would edit the piece. And then when you were done, it was like, okay, I talked to 36 different people. So I have like 36 different nodes that are all kind of tweaked on this generative art piece. And mm-hmm. it's like, I can mint it. Whoa. That's so, so yeah. that was cool. And then inside the event where you're meeting everybody, they had like art IRL artist activation. So mm-hmm. Harvey uh, Rayner is the one who had the code for Marfa Mesh. Like he was the generative artist who mm-hmm. coded it. But then they had like, um, I, f- I forget the artist's name. I feel bad. That I forget. But they were making, um, they're burning wood in like the shape of mushrooms. Hmm. And it was generative. And they just like had a line of people watching this thing burn. Is it like mushroom. a laser or something? Yes. Mm. Like, a mushroom uh, it was like laser wood making mushrooms 
And then they had another one that was clothing, and it was like mm. generative like embroidery. What? So oh, it was yeah, cool. We, we it was gotta cool. go. I gotta go. It was cool seeing like the intersection of like the physical output with the mm-hmm. generative stuff. Like I've seen people on Twitter be like, "Oh, here's my plotter doing this thing." Oh, I, I love the plot. That's on and my list I like too. the time lapse, but I've never actually seen it in mm. person. Yeah, and it gave me a newfound appreciation because a lot all those artists who were doing like the wood or the embroidery, like they're artists who had like curated art box shops too. Mm. So it was like, oh shit, like. That's, um, you know, Thomas Peterson from Screens or mm. whatever. You would just not realize who you were talking to. Right. And it was very, like, art first. Like, you walked up to it not because you were like, oh, that's so-and-so. It's like, oh, what is this? And I think it's just, like... The art is attracting you first before you know. Yeah, you're yeah. just walking up to it because you think what's going on is cool, not because, like, oh, that's Tyler Hobbs. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> which is cool, too. But I like when people were, like, going up because intrinsically they're excited about what they see and not like the idea of or the meeting name the behind person. it or the brand or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for you if you go. Yeah. I think that, yeah, there's sorry. I completely cut off. I was asking. No, no, I that. think it's great. I want to learn all about it. I want to talk. I love go. talking about it. Like, I want to evangelize it. Yeah. Cause it's going to get bigger and bigger. And maybe there's a point in five years where like they it's can't way even too big. do Marfa in art box. Mm. Like I don't, or I mean they can't do marfa because it's like too big too many people come Mm. so i think like i don't want to say it's like a risk but i think like as a community member it's important to go there in the early days Mm. just in case it becomes too big right which i think in due time you never know i mean if you're like betting on a lot of this stuff it's like it's good if it becomes too big but it's bad if it becomes too big i think we saw that in 2021 Mm. started out it wasn't too big things were good very quickly (laughs) everything got too big and it was like, is this sustainable? Yeah, what, are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> um, but yeah, what what other things? So I feel like in 2023, I've noticed uh, a lot of the work you're sharing has seemed to like evolve. Like, mm, how would I describe this? Like, hmm. when I think of your work, I think of like 2D glyphs hmm. that are on a variety of backgrounds that really accentuate something, whether it's a physical like this I'm wearing right now, Mm -hmm. whether it is clothing Mm -hmm. or whether it is just canvas or paper. But what I've noticed over the last six to 12 months is like your use of color and abstraction seems to be evolving. Mm -hmm. And like some of these pieces are super in in depth. It's not just like uh, the the 2D glyph, but there's like this almost three-dimensional the the shading components like how have you been experimenting Mm -hmm. over the last year because i i I feel like i notice it just from looking at the work you put out Mm -hmm. but i'm curious how you're thinking about it. yeah well thanks for saying that yeah i definitely think abstracting uh has been a big uh big thing on on my mind i've always had maybe two styles of drawing one is kind of this very 2d bold line you know envelope peace sign eyeball flower that became kind of like a a staple of my artwork kind of like a think of it as like a tag like oh you see the envelope oh maybe that's probably maybe a vinny mm-hmm. piece or something and i always kind of i like that aspect of it but you do it so much and i'm like it needs to evolve and it can't be and you know you get a lot of comparisons and you get a lot of like um uh, there's only so much you can do with it and i did my letters project and that's like the most proud collection i've ever mm-hmm. done it's like my my kind of pride and joy and um I want to continue to make collections and things, but I don't want it to be the same as what was prior. So th- there's like this natural evolution to it. And then you put in um, different mediums and materials like, oh, well, I got a new, a new airbrush the other day. And then so experimenting with that, but using the baseline of my shapes and symbols to play with the airbrush or Blender or Procreate. And the kind of list goes down with mediums and materials, which I think is probably one of my biggest inspirations. Um, so I kind of have that, one side of drawing and that one style kind of bold lines in the back of my uh, pocket, but it has to continue to evolve and and change over time. So yeah, I've just been thinking about like what mediums am I interested now? So I've been working on like paintings, like what if I make a painting just with a brush? Like I've never done that before, (laughs) like unless I was in high school or middle school. So what does that look like now for me? Or what does, yeah, 30 airbrush t-shirts or a bunch of ski masks look like? Or uh, yeah, what would a new collection look like if it's a hundred pieces but i only use these digital materials and i I don't know i get really excited about that stuff and uh just watching the artwork evolve and yeah sometimes i just sit down with a piece of paper and just draw and for hours with whatever scraps and junk that i have around yeah and i just make stuff all the time and i've got piles of stuff and um 
so it's all good all the all the inspirations there and the excitement and stuff but I think it really comes down to yeah if I want to like mint something or if it's a brand partnership or like where I want the artwork to go and if I have a kind of prompt or something that helps influence the style and, and kind of um, the visuals of the artwork that I want to choose so it's always I, changing oh, I, I bet and it's hard I'm sure to even try to create everything that your mind thinks about like you said earlier like yeah. you have like 20 different things you want to yeah. do but like okay I have to pick uh, one thing I think that's been really important over the course of the last year or it's been more evident is like the idea of having alternative income streams mm -hmm. as an artist because uh, at some point people were like oh we're just selling a tease forever and then you've talked a little bit already about like brand partnerships and mm -hmm. doing other things like how have you um, positioned yourself to like not have to worry as much about the NFT market and just like worry about being a prolific creator yeah well i mean i don't know how deep we want to get into it but like oh, we can get, i we think can. like la last year when i got like my taxes back from 2021 i'm like <laughs> I, didn't, I was like a frugal spender i had like saved most of it but i yeah. was like this is going to i don't know what is gonna ha happen um but i got that all figured out and then i was like well okay deep breath it's fine we, we did figure it out and then then i'm like well now it's just all art like if that kind of have that kind of uh, protection and the uh comfortability of like okay i do have money to live on, to pay my normal bills, mm, to, your taxes are to good. help my grandma and all this great stuff. I'm like, okay, I have a little chunk and like, it's not the, the end of the world. So straight back to the, the, not the drawing board, no pun intended, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm like, okay, so what do we do? Like, there's all this stuff that I'm interested in and that I want to do. So, um, it was definitely like a case by case study. So you, I get a random DM or a random email and this company wants to do something or this person has something going on and you know, I was really um, kind of lucky to have those things kind of come up when, when they did. And um, but now I'm in the place where I'm like, OK, it's the start of a new year. What if I planned out all my stuff mm -hmm. the whole year? And then when these random things come up, they're just extra. And I was like, well, I've never kind of done that before. That's, <laughs> like, that's, that's gotta, yeah. plan. Um, so that's really what I, I did the um, the last week of 2023 from the day after Christmas to the new year. I did like no screens, n no social media. And I was like, this is just, I'm going to plan, I'm going to read, I'm going to like psych myself up. Like and I did all this. Reset a little bit. Yeah, it was so great. I was like itching though. I was like, I need to look at so Twitter. So did you do like actual no screens? Yeah, I, for... I did like no social media for a fact, but there was a couple of times I like texted somebody and put my phone down. Like yeah, just be like, hey, I'll be there in 20 life. minutes. Like, yeah, I'm I mean, done. you got to like. But for the most part, like no TV, no Netflix, no little to no laptop and uh, definitely and, no social media. And then after like what a week you're like fuck I a week it. i was like i gotta get back on because that's when the new year starts but i did all this like planning and all like what what are like my goals people yeah, like, are like people that i've been working with and my kind of internal team has changed a little which i'm excited about to, to work with new people and they're like what are your goals i'm like I, I don't know a lot of this stuff has just kind of come from my interest in art making and posting on the internet like constantly um so yeah, i feel like had a goal more, like <laughs> online people i know i feel like, like back like to the bull run like i always saw you even if you weren't like I'm somebody who's very aware of who is in the space's audience, but I don't really ever like talk about it on the space. I'm never like, oh, hey, like there's our friends Vinny and there's Sam Spratt and there's mm -hmm. Jen. like, I'm never like shouting out people, but like I noticed you were on spaces a lot mm -hmm. during the time I was like in the 2021 yeah. cycle. Yeah. And I've always thought of you as like someone who's like very in tune it's with so, it. So it's just like, I'm just so interested in it. And like once you get in it a little bit, I'm like, I don't know where else, uh, how to phrase It's like, where does like art go from? It's like, it's got to come into the digital realm somehow. And then I'm just interested in tech and, you know, using as many different mediums and materials. And to me, it was just like a social place to be anyway. I didn't yeah. really have any, I lived in Baltimore, live in Baltimore and went to a uh, Maryland Institute college of art there during the pandemic and graduated through the pandemic and they kicked everybody out of the studios and stuff and all this. And I didn't really have a friend group there and, you know, I had my close friends that I kind of grew up skateboarding with and X, Y, Z, but then I just found all these kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like weird people on the internet that like make art and like sell JPEGs. And like, I'm like, this is very interesting. And I'm yeah. spending all my time on social media anyway, looking at art and finding inspiration. Like I'll just post my stuff every day, old or new, it doesn't matter. And just post, post and connect with people. And uh, yeah, Twitter spaces were huge. Just sit there and listen all day instead of listening to 
music or in a car. Is that, is that what you? Yeah. I yeah. Guess. And I just draw and I just be working on whatever I was airbrushing t-shirts and just kind of listen in and be like, Oh, that's interesting. Keep that in mind. Or, you know, you just find so much good info and tidbits of, I feel like a lot of the artists we've talked to too. They, I mean, maybe I self, that might be a, maybe I self select artists that mm. I've known who listen to us talk a lot, but like, you know, we talked to Sam Spratt about it and he was just sitting in spaces all the time. Cause mm-hmm. he's like, well, it's like, where else do you, would you find that much information from other people that have, have the experiences kind of in the space? It's like, that's where you would go. And do you, do you find yourself, um, now like getting the same value out of spaces as you used to get, or do you think mm. it's changed? I think spaces as, as a whole have changed because certain people have their own genre of space mm-hmm. and I never know which ones to listen to. There's like, it's like, like the thread guy space. The yes. streaming spaces. Yes. Where I'm like, we're going to yell, kind of we're going to scream. But I'm not like, I don't know. I'm not learning anything from this. Maybe not. Oh, you can always learn, but I'm yeah. like, there's not, there's uh, it's more of like a drama TV show that you love and that you want to listen it's to. It's like Jersey in. Shore. Oh my, yeah, my favorite. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then Deezus, it's like, well, you talk about art and then you talk about the markets and it's like, okay, that's, yeah, that's interesting and yeah. uh, uh, with a slew of other things. And then there's like a Mario Nafal or whatever. It's just news. And then there's, you know, breaking news. There's some other spaces where it's just like 17 artists and I'll like pop into there and just be like, hey, like, what do you guys Do you find yourself using the listen anonymously feature at all? I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, they, they added it. No, I want to show face. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times <laughs> I'm in a space now, it's like I'm there because I want the person who is talking to like. Oh, Deez is here too. Well, <laughs> a lot of times it's like, you know, your friend's doing a drop or mm-hmm. some uh, project that you're interested in is launching something. It's like, I don't want to be like anonymous because I want them to like think that I'm actually there. Like, I don't want mm-hmm. them to think. But there are like the more uh, Mario type spaces that I will join anonymously just to be like, what? what's going on in here? Like, what mm-hmm. are these people? Why are there 3000 people in here? Like, right. But it's so interesting. And that guy's like, some of those people are on spaces like nonstop and I respect the grind. Um, and like I couldn't breaking do it. News. 2021 burnt me out. I don't think I've been into Twitter spaces since 2022. I love them. Since, since tests are uh, rebranded. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time. Yeah. I like, I don't know something about it. I think I'm just like bad at, I, if I'm listening to stuff, I want to be listening to like a podcast or music. Yeah. Um, I just found myself like, it's like that old, everybody, 2021 people were like, well, just get, go into spaces. That's what they would tell artists. Yeah. Just go and listen. I'd be like, okay. So I started to do that. And then they'd be like, well, go up and talk. I was like, okay. I just request. Yeah. And then I'd be so, I remember sometimes like shaking because I did, was like, I'm on stage and I don't know what, but I'm like, dude, I'm in my house. <laughs> yeah. Why am I like, I can press leave at I'm any like time. I'm scared. <laughs> uh, but then I got over it and it like helped me like public speak. And then like yeah. at VCon, I'm like talking in front of a crowd. I'm like, I don't even care. This is like spaces. This yeah, is no, literally, literally just like spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it helped me uh, public speak to some yeah. degree where sometimes like I'll have great thoughts in my head and I'll say it out loud. I'm like, that's not. Oh, I never what... would have thought we could do a podcast if I never did the spaces. Yeah. But... Doing the spaces was like. Oh, I'm not bad at this. Mm-mm. So Dee's probably knows the answer to this, but I'm curious. How did you originally get into the crypto space in general mm-hmm. prior to Twitter spaces and all of that? What was your kind yeah. of like introduction? Yeah. Well, yeah. Cu- a couple of funny things. I had a, a close friend, Rico, and he was buying crypto kitties in like 2017. Yeah. And I remember him bit. telling me about it just in like hindsight, like, hey, like, you, kitties. Know, you know, we're friends, whatever. And yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm like, dude, you idiot. Why would you buy <laughs> Digital cats, of course, like the same <laughs> spiel. Like you're wasting yeah. your money. But you can XYZ. breed more of them. Yeah. Yeah. I had no clue what. I, and I and I sadly didn't give it the time of day. I really should have. It doesn't matter. Everybody would have lost that. money on the cats. Yeah. 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 But it well. But I would have like art. It would have been. Art, oh yeah. And I'd be like, oh, that's sick. But um, fast forward a couple years. Yeah, it was. I was using Instagram primarily to just share my art and connect with artists. And I was like, dude, I have a Twitter that I made in 2011. Never used it. Let me use that thing. Uh, so I got on and just followed like a thousand people, bunch of artists. Whomever. How did you find those thousand people? You'd follow one artist and you go to their followers and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you go to their likes and, <laughs> um, and, okay. and that's what I did. And then I found like Fawocious, Jonathan Wolf, D face. And then they would, I'd see their artwork and it'd be like, Oh, I'm selling this edition of 20. I'm like, that's okay. Interest. So keep that in the back of my head. And then at that time I was, well, like I mentioned doing a lot of like airbrush t-shirts and home goods and rugs and carpets and stuff. And, um, this local guy who I didn't know, he, um, purchased something from my web store and I was like, Oh, I'll come deliver it, deliver it to you. You're pretty close. And he's like, Hey, have you ever heard of Decentraland or these things called whales? Like these, <laughs> these guys, these big billionaires in Asia, 
buy all this digital stuff, <laughs> digital land. And I'm like, what are you talking about, yeah. dude? He's like, dude, go home. He was like, you'd be so big in this space. Like your artwork would be sick. They keep it in mind, man. Do you? And like, he was literally this guy. <laughs> do you like keep in contact with him at all? No, but I, I looked up his order on my web store to get his name again. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna reach out because I was like, dude, you like I, I, I've been in this thing for like three years now, kind of because you were you like, were dude, like check hey, it the out. billionaires. The yeah. And then, I, then I was like, oh, my friend Rico, was, this is what he was telling me about. So, and then I was on Twitter at the same time. So it's yeah. like all these kind of culmination of these things came together, and then. I think, uh, yeah, I remember my friend Rico installed MetaMask on my computer. I was like, dude, what are you doing to my computer, man? Like, just don't put me? anything yeah. on it. Um, but then we would, like, be addicted to Rarible. And I remember, yeah, seeing, like... Watching all, like, the, the all pranksy different... stuff on yeah. Rarible oh, yeah. back in the day. It. So many different things. Do you things. remember the first NFT you bought? Uh, I think it was uh, Han's Crypto Cube. Mm, nice. That's a good one. Me and my friend Rico bought two crypto. And I think I sold it. I was like, dude, I've never had this one. <laughs> I had like a couple like, ETH at that time. Shit, this just went up multiple. Yeah. But the first most meaningful one that I remember filming my laptop with my phone was my first uh, Cool Cat. Oh, and it was yeah. like it was like two ETH, which was I think like six grand. And I was it's like, dude, I don't have six grand, but I want to buy this thing because it, it. I don't know something about it. And that's where I met. To, uh, you know, Toby Lasso, Klon, yep. all the cool cat, all these people. Hey, that did, you, did you know Klon before you bought the cool cat? Okay. No, uh, but there was something about it. And I was in the Discord. I was like, cool cats and doodles were kind of like my first communities mm -hmm. per, per se that I, you know, lurk around their Discord. And then they kind of embraced me as like the artist. And they were like, oh, yeah, like we'll help. Their communities kind of built mine pretty much as uh, just an in individual artist and not How like a 10K critical project. Do you think? I think that happened to uh, a lot of people in 2021 where like they came in as an artist and then they found a community they really fucked with mm. and then they joined it and that really helped like give them a base of people. Oh, dude, I agree like 100%. Like it'd be really hard right now to just, yeah, I couldn't fathom. Well, it would, you could make it happen, of course, like a new artist coming in today. Yeah. You could easily do it, but there's like certain things back then where it was just like a really, um, like a, uh, not a tidal wave, but a wave of all these people that were like, dude, this is kid is cool and he's here every day. Like he makes cool stuff. Like let's yeah, support him and help like and talk. And I think of all, like there's a lot of making fun of a lot of like the wag me, like everyone, the community stuff, yeah. but there is something. Community is such a buzzword. <laughs> yeah. But there is something very real there of like mm -hmm. people are more than happy to support other people who like kind of have similar goals mm -hmm. or, or desires or like ideals and stuff and Surely. like that definitely has been true i feel like in that space yeah and like all i was like well i don't have any developers i don't know any and then all these people were cool cats and one happened to be a website developer the other one knew solidity or whatever and i'm like you guys want to like help me out with this thing and uh we just built it out from this so all these people that helped me with my letters projects we all had cool cats and i was like i trust you guys because of this and it all worked mm -hmm. perfectly it was great um and it still talked to Klon like all the time actually just texted me uh 10 minutes ago before I got here. And, um, and I think that's like some good alpha for people. It's like, yeah, the community wag me stuff is maybe cringe, but like find your community. Mm -hmm. And even though it is harder in 2024, it's definitely still possible. Yeah, definitely. Like I think I wouldn't look towards, uh, don't quote me on this, but yeah. like, yeah, I wouldn't be an artist and like go into like the board apes and be like, yo, like I'm an artist. Like, what are you guys up to? Like, I don't think there'd be that same I would, kind yeah, of I'd be looking for more like a, a fresher community yeah. that is like, up and coming that smaller ideally yeah. or even if it's like you can um like even marketplaces you can kind of they even kind of have a community to some degree or the the, the chain that you want to drop yeah. on does like tezos our community is like was was i don't i haven't kept up with it but like people are like oh I, that's just where i found my ilk or my the people that i'm interested in yeah, yeah but tezos? i think i think the other big thing there though is just like i think some people just assume that you can like buy the PFP of the project or whatever. <laughs> right. And then everyone's going to do whatever the fuck you want, buy your, buy your yeah. NFTs. But I think like the important thing to not gloss over when thinking about that is that you were saying, you know, you were in there every day, you're talking to people mm -hmm. and you built up a level of credibility yeah. kind of outside of just whatever money you had spent, mm -hmm. which then immediately, like that was what really makes everyone want to help you make a website or yeah. all these different things. Yeah. Not yeah, when just they see you showing you, up like, well, yeah. and then showing up like in person, I went, me and Toby went to the first ever unofficial Cool Cats meetup, and it was like pop, like there was like I don't know seventy five people there, maybe it was everybody was there, and I just sat down, and I just remember looking up, and Klon looked up at the same time. He's like Vinny, I was like Klon, and we just sat and drew the whole time, and everybody was just kind of like, and that was became kind of our thing, like we just sit and draw, and he was a guy that he liked to draw cats, and I like to draw shapes and symbols, and it was like cool, we met on the internet, and like we have these communities, like. That's it was a really special time. Yeah. It still is. Do you remember uh, the first NFT you minted and where you minted it? 
of my own or somebody yeah, else's? Yeah, of your own. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It was on Rarible. It was, I remember like going, I was like, I had an iPad and an Apple Pencil for the longest time, but it like sat on a shelf and collected dust. I couldn't, uh-huh. I it was like, I need a marker. I need a crayon or something. Something tactile yeah, in your hands. Um, so I don't know why I chose it. There's two different ones. There's this one drawing and it was kind of like my more mixed media abstract style and it was called Fuck It We Ball. Oh, and I, love I that. And I minted that on Rarible and then that's... I think that's, a, it was a one of, technically I think it was a one of one and then I did an addition of a uh, drawing that I made with coffee. Like I spilled coffee on it and like, then I drew over it and it was called Coffee Stain. I think it was like an addition of 10 or something on Rarible. But um, Rarible was like, I feel if you were here in 2020 going into 2021, like, more people used Rarible than OpenSea. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even, I don't even think I knew what OpenSea was. I don't R- even Rarible recall. really dropped the ball they, on that one. Like, <laughs> bad for them a little I bit. I like Rarible. It's still cool. Yeah, good I, guys. I, just, I just don't, I just haven't used it enough to know like the differences between my XYZ issue on Rarible is like, I can never tell if I'm getting into some scam shit or some legit shit. I'm like, is this real? Rarible looked like a little bit too much like eBay, I feel <laughs> like, in that like, everything kind of seemed like a scam mm. <laughs> something about it i just like yeah like you were saying i didn't trust anything but we like the ebay yeah oh yeah no we love it yeah. i mean i liked rarible like my first yeah. nfts that weren't punks were like pepe memes mm. on rarible yeah I, I, I remember all of the artwork was like the eth logo and bitcoin logo and like coins and it was all like animated very like yeah. on brand to that ethos it wasn't just like people's artwork like no if, if they were yeah, artists like the they blue, made artwork the blue Bitcoin. kirby nfts yeah. and all, oh my God, that. all the blue kirby and, urns well yeah. now it's like all ai art like instead of it being like bitcoins and eth logos interesting it's right. like now when i go to a new thing it's like because i make a ton of ai art for the pod and it's like i see it and i'm like oh shit like there's there's not there's no bitcoins in the ai art there's not like floating gold yeah. interesting yeah yeah, but I, yeah, I remember just like, all right, I'm going to mint something. I don't know what that means, uh, but I'm going to try to sell it and I'm tweet about it and talk to other artists. Was and- it fairly easy like to find a buyer or do you remember like having to like market it for a while? And mm, I think a couple of like they lingered. I think after, you know, the couple hours after you mint it and nobody bought it, I was like, OK, I'm all, it doesn't matter. Like just keep making stuff and doing whatever. I wasn't like bummed that nobody bought yeah. it. So I was like, this is, didn't really have I, your expectations. If, if I was somebody, in. I don't know if I'd buy this like coffee stain drawing <laughs> like yeah. however much it was but it was pure experimentation so it really didn't matter what um, what was the time from like first kind of becoming aware of this whole space to i'm gonna mint this thing was it like a week was it a month was it a year probably like a couple weeks a couple months nice um and then yeah from rareable and these kind of one-off things um i was like oh i got to get on marketplaces that's the thing like i got to get on foundation or known origin or mm-hmm. super rare and that's okay that's that's next um so i minted a couple one-on-ones on one on um known origin and it sold within like 10 minutes to a guy that i knew and i was like well, it was like one eth and it was like a thousand bucks or so. i was like dude like yeah. you just did that dude like dude and, and it was some guy and he's one of my first cl- aw henry shout out a dubs he was great and he helped me with a bunch of stuff and was just like a great guy and i was like uh, i felt like a, a collector i was like this is cool like, like somebody i can talk to guy, yeah and same thing with a couple pieces on my foundation um alex uh you know he got this this a lot of them were rotating pieces in blender that i made kind of one-on-one pieces just experimenting yeah um so i did a couple of those and then i was like okay, no, I'm going to stop this. I want to do like a body of work. I got really into like bodies of work and that's where letters. Let's came from. How long came did from. it take you? So you had a couple cells and you're like, okay, I got to make this collection. Mm-hmm. How did you approach making letters? Because I feel like at the time it came out there. I mean, there were some collections that were big, but it, it's in my head, it's like relatively an early mm-hmm. collection. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, like what you saw at the time and like how you decided to put it yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, definitely inspired by uh, Defaced and Friends. It was he had like it was like 20 or 25 one of ones or something. Yeah, I think the Deface did he release more? Like maybe up to a hundred th- later on. Yeah, it was definitely because I have a couple. I think. So. I, I remember bidding on them, but they they went like crazy. Right. And I was like, I I can't do yeah. this. Uh, but I think it was like in batches of 25 he released them. Okay. I, I think it was at least 50. Yeah. It might have been 100. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I believe they came out in batches of 25. Yeah. Well, I saw that and I was like, oh, 21 of ones and they're sold at the same time. It's kind of like 
if I made a painting show, I'd have 20 paintings and they'd be technically all one of ones, but they're under this guise of a concept and a theme and uh -huh. you're presenting them at the same time. Um, and I like that. And I saw uh, Will Nichols, his palm trees yes. and how he like lay those out in a grid visually. I was like, yep, all mine are going to be like colorful. They're all going to be one of ones. I'm going to hand title all of them so they can have their own little narratives and stories, but they'll be um, all visually similar because it's all my kind of style of drawing. And I just built it out like that. And once I had a bit of a foundation, I remember talking to Toby Lasso, who, you know, we were working together at the time and, you know, just fuel and all this great energy. And I think I wanted to do like 50 or something. He's like a thousand. I was like, dude, okay. Yeah. Thou let's go. Like, <laughs> I, need it. I was like, dude, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and then I was watching a bunch of just so addicted to YouTube and art documentaries and all this stuff. And I was watching this one documentary. I don't remember who the artist was, but they passed away and, you know, 1920 or whatever and was like and the artist the artist left us with uh 50 paintings 1000 drawings 10 sculptures and something else i was like that's it i'll do a thousand drawings in like three months like i was just like this is exciting i'll do this like so i was just so inspired and like fueled by mm -hmm. this kind of prompt and this like new space and this energy and all these like new people that were in my life so i just sit for like 15 hours a day and just and just make them and make them i was like dude this is sick and everything just worked out so good and uh, yeah super proud of letters and that came out uh, uh october 29th and 30th of 2021 yeah that's and my my grandma's birthday is october 30th and i like i was like well, we we sold all these digital things she's like okay <laughs> like, she's like 90 <laughs> she's like oh. um but it was it was kind of fun to share that with her and try to explain it uh what i was doing and how i was doing it and meeting all these new people online and yeah, it was, it was a great time. It's still, I still have that same energy. Um, but I'm super fortunate and, and, uh, proud to have all those memories over the past only few years, which is exciting. Before you were releasing any digital work as NFTs, you were talking about, you know, you had your site and you were selling stuff there. Mm -hmm. Were you, um, doing any work with like gallerists or dealers mm -hmm. or like local people in Baltimore? Yeah. Before? Yeah. Yeah. I had built out like, um, a little kind of traditional art resume like there's yeah. all these kind of like local call for artists and if your artwork fit in this kind of you know um uh we we have this gallery show and this is the theme if your artwork fits in the theme submit it there's 25 bucks to submit or something like that so i'd like do a bunch of those and had a couple had a uh, a drawing of mine in the um there's like this museum in like western maryland i was like that's kind of cool and like you know just building these i like didn't know really what else to do yeah. as an artist i'm like yeah i'm just gonna like you know try to get in some gallery shows and um had a couple at my old community college and at my college that i went to micah in baltimore and so i was like kind of building that stuff out but i wasn't really selling any artwork or anything like that but um definitely when i moved from trying to sell drawings and paintings to like clothing and home goods and accessories and these kind of obscure things that's when uh, that really helped me financially and to be able to just kind of be a full-time artist. I worked at a, a, a skate shop for like five years of my life. So I'd learned like business through the skate shop and while skating. Um, so I learned like Shopify and how to ship things. And um, you got to see how the sausage is made from the yeah, back end. And it, it like, helped oh, me like, fully. Shout, shout out a pure board shop in Annapolis. Were uh, skateboards the first thing that you started like puff painting or like uh, mm. doodle doodling over? I think the puff paint was... It might have been the ski masks and t-shirts okay. real simple uh but the puff paint was such like a versatile um thing i've been bringing it back i've been doing some like crocs and different things with we got, puff paint. Oh, that's fun. We got the special yeah. mask for the people watching on video right now i haven't mentioned that i'm wearing a mask if they're listening to the audio they're never gonna see this mm -hmm. but Wait, you you're should, wearing a mask i had no idea they can envision it <laughs> yeah they got how it. I, see these all the time. I made this uh frozen colorway silver and like metallic blue mask i uh, must say it's way better on a space when i wore this at vcon like the other one <laughs> My whole face was drenched in sweat. Yeah, with, with the like, spotlights down on you. Oh my god, it was horrible. Um, but so, uh, do you still skateboard? Yeah, as much as I can. I've been. I actually been working on a new skate video. I used to film skateboarding nice. a lot, and just all my friends are way better at skating than me. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd film I picked it. up the camera. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to be outside and be active. So I I just been out filming a lot, and another kind of goal for this year is to kind of put out. I don't know if I'd consider it a skate video, but they'll be skating in it. Mm -hmm. But I've just been like filming. I yeah. got like Super 8 camera, all these like old cameras and just like filming nice. and, and documenting What, what inspired you to go the old camera route? Because when we were hanging out in Miami, you, he literally has like <laughs> this old 
is it VHS? It's a uh, like Super tape? 8, Super 8 camera. Yeah, like that camera, it's like, dude, are we in the 90s? Yeah, well, I think 70s. 70s. Yeah. <laughs> what um, inspired that over like a new camera? Oh, I don't know. The, the It's the kind of the hipster answer. It's like the analog material. It takes time to get it processed. You kind of forget <laughs> what you film and the it looks cool. There's grain to it. There's You don't know if it's going to work or if it, and, I don't know, it has a, a, a sense of, nostalgia to You've it been taking it around everywhere right yeah yeah i've shot a bunch of rolls with the super 8 and then the camera i used to film skateboarding is the vx 1000 it's like a camera from the 90s which is synonymous with skateboarding but I it's mean, like such old crappy technology i want like the, like the chad muska videos yeah. of like the yeah. late 90s yeah. so sick yeah but um yeah i don't know it keeps kind of this that's cool have essence you ever, alive so. have you ever seen the documentary minding the gap I think so. That's like one of my favorite like know. skating movies or like I think so. Mm. It's a good one for anyone who yeah. who likes skating stuff. What's it about? It's just about like these friends who are skaters and one of them is recording stuff about them. Um and it's just like it's not really a, about anything. It's just like about some friends. Mm. Um but it's really really yeah, good. I have to check that. I don't recall, but it sounds great. I mean yeah. like I have so much I, I broke my arm skating oh no. uh, it was the second time i broke my arm and then i stopped skating after mm. and that was all by the age of like eight um <laughs> so like i gave Ow. up before i started i had like a shitty birdhouse board oh sick though. got um yeah. custom not custom but like put on my own birdhouse wheels broke my arm and was like <laughs> i'm over it i never if i can't ollie it's fine uh, but I was just like never coordinated enough with it. But I hate so much nostalgia when I think about those videos because that's what made me want to try. It's yeah. like, oh, this dude's going down three flights of stairs. Like I could do that. And all like Tony Hawk Pro Skater games and oh, the yeah. skate games. Oh yeah, like, I, I was just I love those Tony Hawk Pro. I still games. I bought the the remake on Steam just mm. to like listen to the soundtrack again. Oh, like yeah. I just playing the. There's like two levels I really like. Like one is the mall, and then the other mm. one is the first, like the warehouse. Yeah, the warehouse is like, awesome. I could yeah. just play the warehouse for three hours. And yeah, and then what, was the second one like an amusement park or something like that? Um, school. There's school. the school, okay. yeah. like the Miami. School, yeah, yeah. Hmm. where you're like going on like the roofs and shit. Interesting. Um, Mine was American Wasteland. That was my game. Oh. A little, little later, but that that soundtrack I was like. Well, that was almost like Grand Theft Auto, right? So you could like, like get, you could off, get the off the board and like ride and, like, bikes. Kind of dialogue. Yeah, I think you could like hit people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not a good game if you can't assault people. Right. Yeah, yeah. true. Did you ever get into any other like BMX or inline skating? Yeah, when I was like a, uh, probably under, probably started skateboarding when I was like 12 or 13, maybe seriously. Um, seriously is like not, not a good word to use. Uh, but before that, you I were was like, like trying. Yeah, I was like, like super into bikes and i'd like make little ramps down my driveway and just like hit jumps and yeah i was all into into bikes but um not too serious and then i was like skateboarding's way cooler do you ever have any nasty injuries no I god have, bless i have some like scars and stuff on my elbows from like falling and like sliding on on like concrete and stuff but no that's good serious but, but yeah uh, you're still skating yeah but. Um, do you skate with pads or anything like helmets or you just mm -mm. no we'll be we'll be in the the streets or something trying to film and if I go to a skate park and you need to to wear them, I yeah. probably would. But, but you're not like mm -hmm. uh, now. If I go on a skateboard, dude, I gotta look like um like wearing oh. a pillow. Oh, like a I, Michelin yeah. man. I had a so I did have another foray into longboarding. Mm. Um, twenty twenty summer, COVID summer, COVID Mrs. activities, Deez and I bought longboards. <laughs> You've told me this story. <laughs> yeah, and very quickly, you know, I'm somebody who is um very mentally like. I think I'm really good at things mm. and I think I can learn fast. Mm. And I had this idea that like if I could longboard around my neighborhood and I could longboard around the park, like I could probably go down the biggest hill on Ohio state's <laughs> campus <laughs> and be completely fine. Right. Right. Like I've been longboarding for a couple of weeks. Like I got this. So I go to Ohio state and like for the people who know Ohio state, there is this hill that goes from um, Independence Hall like down to the stadium, and it's on this pretty steep grade, and it leads to like a bus stop, and it's where like our rec center is. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, let's go down the hill. And I'm like going down the hill, and I had this bright idea that like instead of waiting for the cars, I would just go down the sidewalk. <laughs> and you know, if you're going down a sidewalk, you can only really go forward. There's no left yeah, or right to, yeah. to slow down. Yeah. So 
you know at the end of the sidewalks how there's those like orange dotted mm. things <laughs> that are like grips or whatever i think they're for blind people i think so oh, makes either way that yeah. makes sense yeah i had no idea what it was but anyway i'm going down the sidewalk come off that thing lose my balance run off the board think i'm good accidentally run back over the board step on it and then just eat shit right into the curb and oh man to give you context this is the first time i tried to go down the hill and we had just got to ohio state's campus and i'm with my wife and she's reading a book with her back <laughs> toward me like she literally she's was like, like okay i'm gonna read my book she's like good luck honey yep she's, she's like, like you do your thing i'm gonna go read my book and then i'm like 30 seconds later walking up the hill covered in blood and i'm like jazz like i'm like i can't Help. yell i'm like how <laughs> she turns around and like the look on her face is just like what happened in those what 30 the seconds fuck just happened um i'm laying like in a potted tree area it, like she's calling an uber to take me back she's like do you need to go to the hospital like did you break anything and i'm like I'm just lightheaded. Like, I'm and okay. you made it. You made it out alive. But yeah, like you know, my whole uh, yeah, like this whole side of my arm and then both my knees. Like, cause I didn't have any pads on. I was like, I'm not go down the biggest just gonna hill. Bum rush it. Just yeah, I got it. this. Yeah. Like, I like the confidence. I, I was though. watching people. I had so much confidence. I was watching people go like 50 miles per hour down um, roads in California off like hills, and, like, and I'm and they're sliding around. and shit. And I'm like. <laughs> They have like the gloves on. Yes. So they can get low it helps. And, turn, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, if they can do that, like I can go down. The, like I'm in the Easy. Midwest. Like we don't have that many big hills. Have not stepped on the longboard <laughs> since that day. I think that's probably for the best, honestly. Yeah. I, I think there's no reason. Like I'm even scared now of like a city bike. Mm. Like I'm like, I, I don't even need bikes. to take a city bike. Like I feel um, like in Manhattan, the city bikes are scary more because the cars will kill you and they don't give a shit. No. Like, mm. I think they would look forward to killing you. Like it would be an excuse to be like, oh, yeah. fuck, like. Whatever. Especially had, a ba- had a bad day. Let me just take out this city bike. That would be me. I mean, I've Pit heard. <laughs> yeah. I, I've heard some scary stories about people on city bikes getting yeah. hurt. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm I'm 30 now. Mm. I can't, can't do it. Do you guys ever hear about? I don't think he was on a city bike, but I think it was a guy who was on a motorcycle. And <laughs> this is, this is getting off topic, but <laughs> first thing that came to city speaking, bike. Speaking of accidents on on bikes. I think the guy was on a motorcycle. He was in the city and he, he like ran, was running a red light and there was a cop there and the cop to stop him from running the red light picked up one of those like orange, like barrier, barrier cone things and threw it at him <laughs> and killed him. What? <laughs> Did he That's get like manslaughter or something? No, he just had to like no take way. some time off from no the police way. force. Yeah. This was like not that long ago. This That's was like horrible. within the last calendar year. Is there a body cam of that? <laughs> I think people probably saw it. It was like on the streets of New York. But yeah, his his genius idea for how to slow this guy down on a motorcycle was to Kill throw him. a barrier. Yeah, to end his life. Yeah, this world is doomed. This world is doomed. It's stories like that where it's like, I don't need to ride a city bike in New York because mm. someone may throw a barrier at me while I'm riding I, I'll it. take the subway. I'll, walk. Yeah. I'll take the lawsuit. I'll take the lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I hate that. We're talking about the subway. Oh yeah, I got you, lost like three times. It was it, yeah. But I found, I found, I didn't get on a train and get lost. But I was like on the wrong platform. I'm like, oh, there's the train over there. So mm. I'd go and find that, and I bet that would be the wrong one. At least you didn't like go the opposite yeah. way because. You but prior, it. every time I'd come to New York, I'd be like, I'm just gonna get an Uber. And it'd be like sixty dollars to get. And I'm like, I do not want to. It's spend. only getting more expensive now too. Yeah, they keep yeah. adding fees. Yeah, well, now there's this new one for the lower part of Manhattan. There are new fees as well. Oh, if you're like... like con- congestion fees. Yeah, if yeah. you're in a car at a certain time, you're... Yeah, below a certain... It's below not... certain oh, streets. What? Well, it's just it's, like... It's becoming more expensive just to live. Yeah, and so there's a lot of... I mean, like, I think New York and Connecticut are suing the state of... Or New Jersey, I should say, and hmm. Connecticut are suing the state of New York. Because they're like, we have a lot of uh, civilians who have to commute into the city... And like you're charging them so much money, like they can't afford to do it anymore. Right. That's um, insane. And so I, I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but yeah, it's like it's it's crazy. Yeah. We were talking about maybe moving, maybe you know, going to new vibes. What mm. um we talked about LA. Sure. What makes you wanna leave Baltimore and get out to LA? Yeah, I mean I think I've I've done not everything I wanted to do. I have actually I haven't done most of the things I'd like to do in Baltimore, but I think one 
I just think a move, I haven't moved anywhere in my adult life. I've never moved. I've always lived in Maryland. Mm -hmm. I've traveled a bunch the past two or three years mm -hmm. with all this kind of my art, quote unquote art career, you yeah. know, growing. And so I've been traveling a lot and I think as a bit of a change of pace, it would just be interesting. I think people that I'm working with live in LA. I like to be a bit closer. There's more art friends. Baltimore, I have groups of friends and stuff, but I don't really hang out to hang out. I'm not really... Um, there's only a few that I like get inspired about and want to talk about art with and like they care about what I'm doing and like, you know, I'm interested in what they're doing. So I think going to LA, getting a studio and just being around a bit more creative people that I want to yeah. be surrounded with would be interesting and would kind of continue to, to level me up instead of me kind of being super recluse in Baltimore and not real. I don't really go out. I don't like drink or go out anymore, do stuff. And I'm like, just work all the time. So I'm like, at least I had a, like an LA studio. I could invite people to come over and look at yeah. all the stuff that I'm making and not so well and it sounds like you're at a good point and like it's not like you have a bunch of shit that's tying you down in baltimore like because it only gets harder to move and try somewhere new as you get older yeah if yeah and I'm, I'm, I'm in, yeah a great place where you know like my, my grandma's my, my closest family member she's just turned 95 but she's like kicking butt like she's still wow, nice. out in the yard doing yard work and good for her. Uh, you know I, I stay i pretty much stayed in baltimore for a long time to be near her she lives out in the suburbs where i was raised and went to school i lived with her for a long time but um, other than that, I think it's like, why not go, you know, do a year, get a year lease in a studio or something. Yeah. And worst case you hate it and you leave. I go right back. Yeah. I go right back. Um, so yeah, I've been just doing some home renovation things to my, my, my place in Baltimore and kind of making a, making a game plan. And, uh, so it's been fun. It's, it's really exciting. So I think, yeah, I like nice. studio in the next couple months. That's exciting. Man. Try and give, give me another, you know, exciting place to visit when I'm in LA. <sighs> other I, than, other than LA? No, 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 no. When I'm in LA. Uh, now he's excited like, to have a new place to go. Yes. Because like normally yeah. it's like, you know, we'll go to Jen Stark studio. Mm -hmm. We'll go her to another friend's sick. house. Yeah. Really nice. I've never been, but I've seen um, the photos. We filmed a pod in her studio. That oh. was like one of the... With her? What? With her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. I thought you were like, can we just use the studio for a little Devin, bit? Hey, Jen, we're going to be in the city for a week. Can you like not use your studio? Yeah, come in and paint. No, it... You know, ideally, there's a world where, like, we could go to all our artist friend studios and be like, hey, mm -hmm. this is, like, some behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, hey, this is... Yeah. Uh, Jen, you know, her studio is, like, mini museum. She has a couple pieces so that cool. are always out, some of which are rotate. Like, mm -hmm. it's always fun. I think, um, I mean, we talked about Fiwo, like, yeah. Corey Van Loon's studio. Like, it's... My they're not in L.A., um, yeah. obviously, but yeah. any excuse I can get. Summer Wagner. Legend. Go, go check out her stuff in L.A. Yeah. Yeah, um, I had a... Um small studio in baltimore probably i had it for a year but i probably got rid of it almost a year ago now but it was kind of like it was like picture in pictures it like kind of looked fun and nice but like the ceiling was falling apart there's like no heating or air conditioning or mm. wi-fi so i'd go in there in the summer and couldn't work i just sweating all over the yard you go in there now you're frozen now it's frozen i think it did have heat a little bit but it was like extreme heat if it came yeah. on so it's, it's like 95 not, or 50 yeah. So old, so I like didn't even use that. So I'm like excited to have like a proper studio where you like feels like I'm going to work in the morning. I drink my coffee from my apartment. And I go to work, and I kind of like that. And looking forward to like a bit of a schedule. Compartmentalize it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do four hours at the studio and work on these paintings, this project X Y Z. So I think kind of just getting the the art stuff's not going anywhere, but like the managerial and like business side and like keeping everything organized is kind of what I'm excited to to work yeah. on. And um, I think L A might be just a fun place to go and do it. And I know a bunch of people out there luckily already that I meet on Twitter or that I work with. And Oh, you'll have um, a network of like 50 plus people. Yeah, so ex thank you, X. <laughs> yeah, I think you had a drop today. You uh, did? Yeah, on Solana, right? Uh, uh, Ordinal. Oh, Ordinal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, not on ETH. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been looking at any of the, just kind of off that topic, mm -hmm. like I think all your work's on ETH, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you we have did, some on Tezos? We did, yeah, a couple on Tezos from a while back. Um, and then I did one, I wouldn't say it was an art focused thing. It was more of like a, it's a good word. Uh, it was like a raffle's not the best word, but I did something on Solana where we, it was called Letters Royale, and we had all these tickets gotcha. that people got. And uh, the, there was a winner. The last winner got a one of one on Solana. So technically, I have one of one on Solana, but nice. uh, yeah, I really haven't done any like releases on non ETH. Platforms, yeah. I was wondering, do you try to keep up with how all that stuff moves, or do you feel mm -hmm. like uh, comfortable letting other people figure it out? And then once it's more figured out, like, okay, I'll come. Yeah, yeah, I, I like to see what other people work on and and how they do it first to get get a sense of it. That's I'm excited for Ryan's drop today, just to, to see how that goes. And 
or if other people are dropping on Solana, like I think that goes in like metas, like people kind of rush mm. into it. Uh, I'm not saying any of these people, no, do. they no, definitely no, haven't no, at all, sure. but some people just see the meta and they go straight to it and they just mint a ton of stuff, um, which I would never uh, kind of think about doing. It had to be pretty um, justified. I, I feel like you've always scope. been pretty deliberate. Like yeah. you never give me the sense of somebody who is like, scrambling to like put something out in yeah. time I, I just remember listening to a bunch of spaces in the beginning and people were like do not rush and just be meaningful when you mint something and yeah. i think i probably heard that, that on your spaces you. many times yeah it's yeah because then there's like i don't know you see the um turbo or like all these coins and people are <laughs> minting their artwork for that i'm like it's great you could have made a bunch of money but like i don't want to rush into sell it at the millisecond yeah like when people were like oh i'm selling my thing for pepe Sell it the millisecond you receive the Pepe. Don't mm-hmm. like yeah. hold the Pepe and hope that it triples. Yeah, well, there, there'd be things like that. And then like, you know, uh, open editions was a big thing. And I kind of waited a while to do an open edition because it's like, well, it's like, well, why am I doing this? Like, yeah. There has to be some type of reason. You weren't like, oh, like I, you know, need to buy uh, a G-Wagon. So <laughs> well, I would it. love to have a G-Wagon. <laughs> it, it will come in due time, but it won't be from <laughs> an open uh, edition. just shilling all of my artwork at every yeah. other week. Maybe, maybe, maybe when you <laughs> yeah. do buy it, just like wait to post until after all the drops. <laughs> yeah. Just post yeah. it like nine months after. Yeah. <laughs> that was a crazy thing during an open edition season. It was like yeah. December and January. Yeah, I did. I think I did mine in... Uh, February. I let I let the let it die the down. dust settle and it's still it's still blue. I was I was in LA when I did it and I was like I think I opened mine for four hours and it did thirteen hundred of them. And I was like, dude, there's just no way this is like uh it's like perfect. I really needed that to You didn't need like fifteen thousand holders who were then No, no way. Um and then it's cool because then you could offer to like burn to get other artwork or yeah. you kind of loop it into the narrative of all your other pieces. And I, that's what I've been kind of trying to focus on. It's like what's the narrative through a lot of my artwork um because most of the time i just want to make stuff and i'm like okay that's great but there's like a subconscious narrative mm-hmm. that i find i mean you're definitely of one of the artists who i would say is like prolific in output like mm-hmm. some people we talk to you know i don't get the sense that like they want to do art for like 15 hours a day mm-hmm. and that's like fine but you're somebody who i feel like has always been I'm i mean like, not 15 I'm like hours itching to draw <laughs> but like like right now like after this like i mean i wouldn't be surprised if you like yeah. pulled out a notebook while we were <laughs> yeah. talking and just started like yeah letting it rip uh, I, I think it's just such a it's a addicted addictive to be honest i think i have an addictive personality to begin with and art has luckily been I, I was priority some of the work you did in like seventh grade like you did like <laughs> a, a matisse room oh yeah and i was like dude that I that was my grandma's living room, and I turned it into, like, a Matisse thing in, like, fourth grade. Like, that type of, uh, I think it might have been the, the diary. Mm. I don't know if, remember if it was the diary video or if I was on your Instagram or whatnot, but, mm. like, when you showed all the work that you made that wasn't, like, your quote-unquote style, it was like, oh, holy shit, like, like Vinny can, I, this sounds really stupid, but I'm like, Vinny can draw. Yeah. Like, yeah, I didn't mean that. No, in like I, totally, a... I totally, I totally, totally agree because it's like, that's what I learned in, I guess, thinking out loud, learned that in art school. Like I take all these like life drawing classes and you draw a nude model or whatever. And I'd sit there and I'd draw it pretty good. Yeah. Like, okay. Shade it. And then the next day you do the same thing. I'm like, that's so boring. I just scribble all over <laughs> it. And then the professors were like, this is great. Do more of it. And they were encouraging this kind of mm-hmm. exploration. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to draw a dog. It's like, I could sit there and draw the dog yeah how it's portrayed or i could just have fun and scribble and like find my own stuff yeah i I think that really helped out um i think it's good like i think some people might not even know like it sounds so stupid but like some people look at the output and they're like oh it's like 2d glyphs and it's like well look at the other stuff he did before like he Mm -hmm. fell in that style it's like dude can draw like very detailed like i Maybe Mr. like a Super Mario or like oh, yeah, there's always weird little characters and it's creatures like, yeah, and drawing really good characters. And it's not yeah. just like the other. A couple of weeks ago, I was uh, I was looking through Sam Spratt's work. We already mentioned him. And I was looking through like how he pa- he digitally paints his eyeballs and stuff. And I had went out to the art store and got some big canvases. And I was just kind of studying and I was just trying to like painterly paint like yeah. he would. And I sent him a DM. And uh, but it was fun. I was like, let me just try something that I'd, I always do that. Like, what's something that like. I haven't done in a while or that I've never done. And Sam's is like very circular. Like when you yeah. zoom into it, it's like, it's like a lot of little, but and it's, then when um, you zoom out, you're like, holy shit, like that's so good. Um, and it's all, yeah, I, I can't 
say enough good things about him, but the way that his detail comes across from like mm-hmm. a digital creation, it looks like you can touch it and like yeah. see the texture and it's like, wait, that's all. Yeah. And I always like seeing, I mean, this would be a different circumstance from Sam's, but maybe he'll do it. But like, you kind of know his artwork or somebody else's artwork. Like for me, you, you go, Vinny does the shapes. And I go, okay, cool. You but know then he comes out with something different. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, how did he come up with that? Um, and that's what I always look for. Like artists that like, feel like evolve tra- over time. Do you feel like trapped in a style or do you feel like very, you know, fluid? Free like, bird. Yeah. 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 It's like, I think it'll always be around like these shapes. And I always kind of abstract them. Even like if I just pick up a pencil and naturally draw like an eyeball shape. It's always just like, uh, uh, what's the significance of the like I, the eyeball comes up a lot with people mm-hmm. we talk to like jake free yeah eyeball oh, yeah uh what what's the significance between like the eyeball the envelope the flower mm. or like the, the the ones we see the most yeah well i think in the beginning like middle school high school when i started that it was one i couldn't pay attention in class at all so i would just scribble on the edges of my papers and fill in all the space so i was just filling in yeah filling in space it's like, okay, well, what's a circle? Well, it could be a, a basketball, a peace sign, a swirly. What's a rectangle? An envelope, a room, a box. So I just kind of think like that. And then they kind of became this um, comfortable thing that I would draw that I could represent easily with just like a couple lines. So I just do that a ton. And I always drew like, yeah, motorcycles and eyeballs and like cool stuff as like a little boy, like playing in dirt and like <laughs> riding bikes. I'm like, yeah, let's draw monsters and stuff. Like, um, so I think it all just came from like, I, I've always had art surrounded my life. Always had parents would always give me art books and go to museums. And my childhood house was filled with, I had like a Joan Moreau print in my bathroom that I'd look at when I was a little kid. And so you're always surrounded by it. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super inspiring. Yeah, I think your, your mom gave you some advice that was like, keep, all the things you ever oh make. yeah <laughs> yeah she was like she did a lot of uh uh displays in uh malls like you know mannequins and they have the new clothes mm-hmm. for that season she'd like do all those oh and, that's cool uh she kept all every photo every you know she documented everything and she was always precise about like um she'd be like well the edges of your paintings need to be, it needs to look nicer their presentation is off and she'd always give me good ideas and yeah the saving everything was like whoa okay like i don't i don't care if it's like a scrap that i draw on put it in some somewhere somehow it'll come up so yeah it was, it was great advice my, my mom saved everything i made and it's so cool too and then when you get older and older and older you're like so glad i did uh, save my that. dad and her over the last year have given me all the stuff that they kept of mine they're mm-hmm. like you're 30 <laughs> like your house is bigger than ours now <laughs> like you you have the story take <laughs> the shit out of our attic but it's funny opening it up. You like yeah, well, well, flash back 25 years and you're like, wow, I'm no better at art now than I was 25 <laughs> years ago. That's what I, that's originally mm. what hit me. It's like, I might've been better when I was seven. <laughs> maybe, I think maybe everybody was. Ooh, ooh. That's, that's a hot you're, you're just You're just creating with nothing. You don't care. You're just creating. To yeah. No create. like preconceived notions of what's yeah, well, the I'm going right to make this to sell it on Solana or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'm no. just going to make it. <laughs> I'm just going to scribble. And I think that's, that's what I kind of, that, that essence of just like, oh, you see one thing like, oh, this, this guy made a movie. I want to make a movie. I, I could do a full, it's like, oh, this guy ran for mayor. I want to run for mayor. Like this kind of delusional seven year old yeah. kind of thinking, but it's like, if you plan it out, I'm going to be a professional football player. Right. Well, what did you, when you were a kid, if someone asked you what you wanted to be, what did you want to be? Dude, I had pretty sure, like I never played basketball, but I remember be, wanting to be a bat. I never watched it. Never played. <laughs> but it was like, I could, and I remember like, I could do it. I wanted to be a cop. And I was like, dude, I hate the cop. Like, Why? <laughs> I don't, I, don't like the, I don't hate the cops, but I'm like a skater. Yeah, but you're yeah. skateboarding. It's like yeah. the cop um, is like a rival. And then I was, then, then I remember when I got much, much older, you know, I was like, you know, it's probably like seven when I wanted to be a basketball player or a cop mm-hmm. or something. But then like 14, I was like, oh, maybe I'll, you know, I had a bunch of like crazy life stuff start to happen in these kind of like late teenage years. And I was like, maybe I'll do business, like the safe, a safe yeah. thing while doing art stuff. And um, the art started to compound a lot. And I was like, I wanted to go to art school and I got this transfer scholarship to go to MICA. So I, I didn't have to pay as much. And my mom always wanted to go to MICA. So I was like, I'll go for you, go for her. Um, Maryland Institute college of art. So I was like, yeah, let's just do the art thing. Like, let's try. I kind of regret going to art college. Cause I don't think I got a ton out of it other, yeah. other than debt. Um, <laughs> what, what's the most important thing you think you got out of art college? 
There had to be something. Oh yeah, that most. This is only in specifically the the grade that I was in at the moment that I was in school. I don't. I can't talk. But like nobody seemed to take their artwork seriously. Nobody cared. Like we got kicked out of all of our studios, and I saw everybody throw their artwork away. I was like, you're in college, and your parents are probably paying tens of thousands of dollars. And you got kicked out. You have to go back to whatever your home state is. You're just throwing it all. Like this is supposed to be the most important artwork of your career. Career, or your, you know. I was like, uh, there's only like a couple other people that I remember. This is just my perspective that I remember that were like serious about their craft and what they wanted to build and their narrative and their skill set and their resume. And um, I thought I was. I, I kind of I felt like a little bit of an outcast, but I like. I was like, dude, this is my life. I care did so much. Did you find when you got into our space that? people cared more yeah yeah uh for a bunch of different reasons good or bad yeah um but most of the artists i was like these people like Klon wants to draw cats and he loves drawing cats the crazy thing about <laughs> Klon is like you can go to his instagram and see that he was drawing the cat for like seven years yeah. before cool cats and that's, thing. that's like, how i related to him like you know i've, he, I've just been drawing drawing in general or these shapes and stuff for so long and uh danny cole like just a brilliant crazy kid like you know i love danny um he just wants to make stuff and he's got all these ideas and he just doesn't stop. And he's like, what, what inspired you to like start, um, doing like, you know, creating art on physical goods. Like I think like uh, AirPod maxes that mm -hmm. you have powder on, I think of like chairs and table sets you've done. Like what yeah. was the impetus behind? Okay. I'm like not going to use paper. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use yeah. iPad. Like I'm going to go on the, the wall or the chair yeah i think the um another falling down like the youtube rabbit hole and i was watching some like i think it was some artist in new york or a fashion guy in new york and he was just filming like a vlog or somebody was filming him nonetheless but he was walking around talking about like you know people are our, our age quote unquote like below 30s like most of them can't afford a big painting if you're a painter and you want to be a prestigious traditional painter you want to sell your artwork for a ton of money mm -hmm. um and i was like okay yeah, i want to be a painter but i want my artwork to be accessible and this was you know five years ago or something six years ago and he was like well the best way is to put it on clothing like you can put this kind of similar artwork but in a different vein on clothes and things that people wear and utilize that are 30 40 bucks you know 100 dollars at, at max um makes a lot of sense um and my art and i wanted to experiment with different materials like i can't use a marker on a carpet so what do you use <laughs> well yeah. you can use spray paint airbrush and then you go down the list and then you're like okay what can you use on clothes like well puff paint and then you can airbrush that too and then you can draw on it so i'd start to like draw on jeans and i had a, a close friend she was like have you ever drawn on a pair of jeans and it's probably like 2015 or 26 i was like no and just like made, open up yeah so super simple concepts but um so then I would do like these little pop-ups at the skate shop I worked at and sell the clothes. That's and cool. Yeah, it was just like kind of just a means to an end just like to do it. And I'd be like, oh, I have a few hundred dollars in my pocket. Cool. Like I don't, okay. That's and great. it's like you get to propagate your art. Like it might not have been as obvious back then, but now it's like those people have kept those clothes or that item in their mm -hmm. house. Like, Yeah, this girl, this girl just DM'd me this morning on Instagram. She's like, hey, I have these pants from 2016. Can you redraw over them i said no keep those i'll just do you a whole new pair oh, because yeah. like keep the old ones and i'll just give you a new pair so yeah like it's um and then i got into the web3 space and had i guess you know did all these collections and certain things and people knew me for that artwork and they were like you make t-shirts i was like yeah we make t-shirts for a long time this. so it's like cool to like reintroduce these different yeah. things to and crypto people, people love merch they're oh, they do oh yeah, yeah. You, you tell them i, I gotta got stay away from the word merch though. sorry Apparel. Yeah. just like art on clothes yeah because it's 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 not merch for when like we a brand. did this yeah. drop the whole goons team is super against the word merch like they're like i'm gonna fucking rip out your tongue and and light it on fire mm. if you say the word merch and it's but like, i think there's because i think it devalues yeah the, no, i think if you point. if you physically paint on something it, it there's no way i'm not a youtuber <laughs> like i'm not a band uh yeah i, I paint it on it like it's art yeah on, it's just a, it's like i use the same puff paint on a painting yeah. but is the painting my merch technically i guess my painting is my merchandise that i sell yeah, it's all <laughs> so i think the word i think people just like that that word which is fine i don't get um too uh concerned about it but i i, I think it's an interesting I didn't conversation doing the art on physical stuff for so long before because it didn't become aware to me until you did the three ski masks yes yeah. um when you were doing it before Web3, did you find, like, Instagram or, like, were you getting, like, any, like, viral 
I don't know, viral is the right word, but like exposure mm-hmm. through, oh, this person really liked this thing. So then they put on Instagram and then other people are like, yeah. I need that chair. I need those clothes. Yeah. Well, I would do, well, many things I would do like Instagram giveaways for like chairs, be like, like follow and tag a friend. And that, that kind of helped uh-huh. uh, with chairs. And then there'd be like these kind of like hype beastie pages that would post the new Yeezys or Nikes or whatever. And I'd somehow get some of the shoes and draw on them first and then mm. post them. So then like a couple like hype accounts or whatever would repost them. And what accounts? I used to follow all those back in the day. Dude, I don't uh, like little Jupiter <laughs> and like all these other like obscure yeah. kind of that talk, just talk about like rappers and art and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I would just DM them and be like, yeah, I made these, like I drew on these easy slides. Will you post them? And they'd be like 50 bucks. I'd be like, okay, <laughs> Pay, PayPal them 50 bucks. And you get, um, a little bit more cloud. Yeah. Or yeah. So it was, it was fun. Um, that's been a kind of a trend that like, you weren't afraid early on. Um, I think a lot of people were like, okay, I'm not going to submit my thing to this because I have to pay money. Mm. But like early on, you mentioned trying to get some of your work in galleries mm-hmm. or local shows. It's like $25 application fee. Like right. You're really comfortable like early on. Like, yeah. I believe in what I'm doing. So I think it's worth paying 25 bucks or 50 bucks just to get it out there yeah. because it's going to help me come oh, back in the long run. For, for sure. And it's like, well, I was making my living as an artist i had some money so i was like well i just used the, the money for to ex- back expand the art. the art and that's that's what it is now it's like i have a little bit of money like i could get an la studio and like for a year and like let's try let's try that and see if i'm sure that will kind of double down and, and mm-hmm. help out so i think it's always about putting the art first and foremost and if you have money to use for the it's a business at the end of the day um so it, it, that always kind of helped out and yeah a lot of the the kind of clothing drops or home good things i do on my web store would so it was started out really slow. It's I remember I did the trucker hats and I used to wear my trucker hat yes. all the time. And I remember I released the blue, it was batches of blue, pink, and black ones. Didn't sell a single one. And I was kind of bummed. I was like, you know, okay. Um, so I kept the black one and I just started to wear it and it became that, like that's my like thing. kind of like iconic. Yeah. Like it's, and I was like, okay, I'll turn the bad into a good and yeah. I'll just brand myself around this stupid hat to sell more at a later date to try. <laughs> Um, cause I think they're cool and yeah. I still do, but I, I've retired it personally for me as like a rebrand for the new year, but I'll still make them and, and sell it's them. It's still your stuff. profile picture though. Yeah. But I, I, I tweeted something the other day. I was like new PFB. I'm thinking, I don't know to what Ooh. it's like a big thing. It's kind yeah, of it's a digital a identity. <laughs> I know. I like, I've been considering changing my PFP back Daunting. to my punk. Yeah. Cause I changed it post wedding to oh, yeah, a you're, wedding you're photo. yourself. And I think it's time. I think it's time to get back to the Dude, back I want to punk roots. so bad. Since um, <laughs> Twitter made it so that if you change your PFP, it takes seven days to, like, re-verify you. Mm-hmm. That's made me stick to the punk. Is that so- still a thing? Yeah, I think so. It can be. It's faster. It is? Okay. Yeah, like, mine was probably 24 hours. Oh, that's way nicer. Mm. So I've yeah, always... It's, it's up to seven days. I've had it in the back of my mind. If I ever switch off the punk... I'm immediately gonna be like a week of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin puppet, <laughs> dude. Don't get me started on the puppet. I mean, I. Oh my god. I'm gonna talk about the puppets for a second because you brought up when Sorry. I first saw the puppets. I thought they were the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like I don't think I gave them more than 15 seconds of my brain space, and then they minted for free, and they're sitting there at like 0.01 Bitcoin, and I'm like, oh, this one has a clock. And I'm like, what time is it on the clock? And I squint. I'm like, motherfucker, it's 420 on this clock. And I just start <laughs> laughing. Like, I'm just sitting there just cracking up like, holy shit. So then I start going through all the trades. And I'm like, this is amazing. These are way better than I thought they were. And then I go on the, pup- the puppeteer's uh, Twitter. And I'm like, this dude's way on the spectrum. Like, <laughs> and he's it's like, he's not okay. But it's in a wholesome way. Like, I mean, it is. It it's is. not in like a vulgar know, way, insidious or like it's European dude who's actually mm. kind of older, has a kid. Like, it's not just like a 12 year old in paint that even though. <laughs> would that make it better? <laughs> no, I don't think it would. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think it's better yeah. that it's like a 30 ish year old European dude with kids. Did like, he make it on MS Paint? I don't. I, I, I don't, don't know too much know. about it. I just I, I honestly them. don't know. It yeah. looks like it. Yeah, it does. Look but like I, it. I like how they look. But yeah, I, I think they're good. I think it's like a cool. I'm up over thing. like 26 of them now. <laughs> like I'm a. I check the floor every couple of days, and I'm like, why is don't there? Don't lie to yourself. You check the floor more than every couple of <laughs> Two days. Two hours. 
in between each podcast, I check the floor, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's a ketamine shirt on the floor. Like, that seems mm. like it shouldn't be there. Like, I'll buy that. Or like, oh, there's a... Yeah, my favorite one of my favorite ones is like it has a lean cup and like a, a bitcoin <laughs> bathrobe with a bitcoin chain and like perfect shades Ugh. smoking it like kind of looks like how i imagine kobe would be if he was a drug dealer mm. and i'm like there's a puppet for everybody I, i've noticed and uh the, the whole ordinals thing like i don't think there's that many good ones mm. in like, general yeah i some of them are expensive. Like there's like ordinal maxi biz. They're like 0.4 plus Bitcoin. They have this like. What you was know. the Forgotten Ruins thing that they minted? The, like so those were crazy. So sick. They did. Uh, they they had. Was it 600? 600. Six, six. I thought it was 666 or something. Like that. I think like 66 of them are like held back. Um, but <laughs> they had 10 inscriptions that are a sub 1K inscription, which means. They were minted in like the first week that ordinals were interesting uh, able to be minted and if you bid 0.2 on the hat you got entered into a raffle to win that so there was this whole like i would say so hype. you were entering a raffle sort of yeah i didn't buy one because i thought 0.2 like it's a lot and of i'm an investor in the runes team like i own land i own a bunch of wizards i own a bunch of warriors like they know i love them and I was even talking to them on a space the night before, and there was no expectation of, like, these are all going to minute point to. It was like, oh, maybe, like, 10 or 20 people who want the raffle will enter it, and then, like, maybe they'll sell it. Ripped. 0.05. I'm at the store with uh, Jess, and I look at my phone, and I'm like, am I seeing this right? <laughs> like, they all minted for point two, And then I, like, texted Bear, and I was like, first off, congratulations. <laughs> <And> like... <laughs> But holy shit. Yeah, um, yeah it was the whole hats thing. Hats off to them. It's yeah, all is interesting. But the raffle, like there's the and we did this with the um the toy that I dropped mm-hmm. through the goons. And I've seen it with a lot of other projects where like if you put a, a raffle or like a rarity component, it just does better. Like because people want to gamble. And right. especially with multiples. I think that's hard to to hear from the artist perspective. Oh, it has sometimes to be. Mm-hmm. it has to be. Which it's like you, you're kind of signing up for it a little bit. There's nothing yeah. you I think can it works do about so it. Like you talked about doing the Solana one on raffle. Yeah. It's similar to that where like if you're going to put out a collection, like maybe you have a couple that it's not that different for you. Like if you make a thousand pieces, like maybe like 10 of them get a, a physical component. It doesn't yeah. even have to be crazy, but it's just like, yeah. oh, like I got a video. I think it's fun to, to gamify it. It's always fun to like try to insert something different. you never want different. it to come off as like, oh, the founder or the the team is like trying to milk the community it's like a very fine sometimes you can see it it was a very fine line like Mm -hmm. yeah one of the things we did for the toy drop was you know there's two tiers um that are you know the super rare and legendary but it's one-on-one physicals Mm -hmm. from the goons artists so So it's like you're gonna get a big ass painting or you're going to get a hand painted sculpture that's like i think when you offer stuff like that it's it's great but there's other, I think that you see some other people and it, you just, they're like trying to get like max mint. When it, when it becomes like a, um, I think of like trading cards. Like I think of the Panini shit where it's like, oh, I have like a green octagon, a black octagon. It's like you collected 13 different Sean O'Malley's and the background <laughs> color just changes a little bit. Like that's not exciting. Or like the kids like, that collect like prime bottles. There's like different flavors that are like more rare. And they're no. like, people do that i had no idea I'm, no. I'm kind of i'm like putting context clues together i yeah. haven't done the deep dive but doing that. i'm pretty sure there's like different well, flavors of prime so it makes I mean. sense because growing up i knew people who would keep every monster energy drink can they drank it was like a flex yeah they, they put them put them up they have on a, a shelf. wall like and then now, now I mean, it's now it's like the the frat boy version where it's like all the different uh 30 packs yes all the wall. alcohol you've had <laughs> yeah. Or, like, they break down the cardboard yes. and make a coulage. Yes. I want one so bad. <laughs> Have you guys tried the uh, alcoholic monster drinks? No, monster I didn't drinks? know that was a thing. Sounds dangerous. They're very good. <laughs> so, I, I tried them. Uh, there's no caffeine in them. They just came mm. out because it feels like a scam. So, it's 21 years of monster energy. And so they were like, on the bottle, we were like, we thought it'd be funny to because we turned oh, 21 to have an alcoholic drink. That is fun. And so it's um, like very lightly carbonated. Um, it's actually v- pretty low calorie. It's like 130 calories a bottle. It's like a Michelob Ultra. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Mick Ultra with monsters. So it, it tastes like I, I got the green one 
and it tasted like Green Monster. Like it, and I, I like how Monster tastes. And so it tasted just like Green Monster. It was like 130 calories for a mm. can, like five or six percent alcohol, no no caffeine. Hmm. But I like legitimately liked it. I think it'd be tough to drink like four of them. Do you like, know what fruit it, it was? It was like six percent alcohol. Oh, okay. Do you, do you ever uh, have one of the cactis by Travis Scott? His like no, seltzer. I haven't. Is the it good? good? No. no, dude, I, I we had a long night on those when those first came out, and I was just ugh, so sick, I, dude. I feel like I feel like with that stuff, it's just like if it's too sugary, it's like agave. Oh, and it's like, yeah, it's fuck you up. Viscosity yeah. to the drink, and you like have five of them, you're like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> One of my favorite new, if you like seltzers, there's this new brand called, um, I think it's like Happy Dad. Sure, yeah, and those are good. Oh, mm-hmm. from the Nelk Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've tried them. It, Andy got me hooked on this. I never had the sparkling water. Mm. This is an ad. Saratoga, if you would like to sponsor us, what are the guys? This is delicious. Mm. This tastes like a Sprite that mm. isn't uh, with any sugar or lemon or lime. Interesting. Like, it's so fizzy. Have you ever tried yeah. a Poppy? Those, like, healthy yeah, probiotic yeah, yeah, soda? Yeah, yeah. Shout out. Those are good, too. They sent me a, a nice box. So, shout out, nice. Poppy. Yeah, they're sick. Also, um, I did Google it. People do collect Prime bottles. I bet, yeah. And people, I, I, I found a Reddit post being like, why do people collect Prime bottles? And they were like, I don't know. Why not? Why not? <laughs> like, I think some are rare love, and they're yeah, worth I think, more. Yeah. I always get confused when like people like Logan Paul have a cult following. Like, <sighs> watching CryptoZoo. <laughs> yeah, like watching from the crypto angle of, and I think about this of a lot of the influencers who get in. Like, I feel like most of what they do is bullshit and then they get into crypto and it's like, this looks like a whole bunch of bullshit. Mm. And then the floor price just goes down <laughs> and it's like, Oh, it was a whole bunch of bullshit. And I'm like, do their fans just not care? I don't like, I don't think they do. I don't think they maybe get the implications of what's going. They're like, let's just do this thing. I, I don't like, yeah. let's do just- you find that like, um, I don't know how you've dealt with like people not in this space, but like when you explain your mm-hmm. stuff to people, do you get a lot of like pushback of like, oh, that can't be real, or like, oh, that seems mm. silly. Like, I don't know if in Baltimore, um, if you've gotten any like exhibition or gallery things recently mm-hmm. since the NFT stuff blew up, mm. but like, if so, have you f- fallen into like any roadblocks or? I think most people are if they know that I've done it, are interested in it, at least ar- other artists and creative people. Um, I don't know how willing they are to jump in their, their, their selves. They're just kind of like, yeah. is this, is it real? Like what, what did you do kind of thing? Like if you onboarded anybody who like bought early clothes, like uh, uh, outside I tr- of the chair. I tried. I yeah. tried. Um, I've definitely gotten a few of my like close skate skater, like open up their wallets and like give them artwork or yeah. Uh, no, not really give them more, but like give them stuff. And be like something. Oh, yeah, talk about it with them. Um, like I'll send someone like twenty dollars in ETH and be yeah. like, okay. I have a, a bet with a friend now for point one ETH if that for dry January if he lasts, I'll give him point one. <laughs> nice. So I don't fun stuff like that because yeah. I know they have a wallet or something like that. Um, but no, not too much pushback. And I think the way if like my grandma or somebody asks, it's like I just use radically different words that mm-hmm. are like really easy to to digest. Yeah. Does your grandma have a wallet? Um, no, I probably should make her one though. Um, but she's been pretty good on the iPad. She we've been teaching her the iPad the last few no. years, so she'll watch like church, like oh, online yeah. church and stuff. I'm like, dude, she's she ordering stuff on Amazon. I'm like, you're That's 95 crazy. and learning. My, this stuff. my grandparents are in their 90s and they do not know how to use their. Cell phone. I can't get my grandma and my grandpa in their 70s an Amazon gift card because they don't use Whoa. the internet. Are yeah. they scared of it? They live out in like rural Pennsylvania mm. and like they have it like. My grandma used to send emails with me before she, um, she's kind of been dealing with like some Alzheimer's. Sure. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. It's just, uh, I mean, it's life. Like it, Mm. you know, just as well, like shit, shit just happens. Stuff happens. Um, but yeah, anyway, like I can't get them any (laughs) gifts. Like it's like, okay. Like I got them an Olive Garden gift card for Christmas Mm. because it's like. My grandparents love, uh, they really like. Panera bread, mm. charged they, lemonade. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, my grandma's just housing charged lemonade. No, but they, they also really love um, Boston Market. Ooh. Those are the two for them. So nice. But yeah, they neither of my grandparents have Wi-Fi in their homes. Whoa. The one has a computer. The other one does not. Mm. Yeah, my, so they my grandma like live totally off the grid. Loves to learn. She's like, you're you're keeping me young, and she's like ninety five. So I'm her. like, I guess, yeah, I guess to some degree. I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, the blockchain thing, huh? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of, it's yeah. interesting, huh? Yeah, <laughs> like, she's crazy, grandma. Yeah, she's like, dude, she said something the other, oh, what 
What'd she say? Oh, it was so funny to hear it come out of her, her mouth. It was some like word or catch like a buzzword that we always use. She and said wag me. <laughs> Dude, she said something. Oh, it's gonna bug me. It doesn't matter. But I was like, you just said that. That's really funny. Um, but yeah, it's it's great to try to try to explain it to non people that aren't addicted to Twitter or have mm-hmm. been in the space. Yeah, for like a when while, I go home so. for Christmas and they just ask what I do, I, I don't want to How are your little JPEGs doing? Like all those memes and stuff. Oh my God. And then I have like a yeah, a younger brother who follows my account, like my father in law. But follows. but when you're up, then the, then they actually they seriously ask. They're like, Well why didn't you tell me to buy this? I'm like I don't know. You thought it was <laughs> I always feel bad or not bad. It feels weird like posting the financial things mm-hmm. when you know your family follows you mm-hmm. like I'll, I'll tweet like very candidly like here's how i turned a little bit of money into a little bit more money and i'll tweet pictures of the punk bids mm-hmm. like i i don't and know you're like turn you're like turning it down well that one yeah the, yeah i don't bring that one up too much but like i'll like the other day like yesterday a hoodie punk sure got a bid for like 210 <sighs> Like I tweet that and put that out, but then it's like, <laughs> you know, family knows I have a hoodie punk. They're like, why aren't that the idea that something could be worth that much and like I don't sell it, right? Just doesn't compute. They're like, what are you doing? Which is fair. That's I mean, the, like I kind of get it. That's kind of the yeah. fun of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's is. kind of like, yeah, I don't, I'm gonna hold this, but like I don't want to like explain myself either. No. Like I just want to be. Do me. you think you have to do me? Ah sometimes mm. like i don't know you have this view of your your parents or your role models is like you know they're probably right but then like you have this other view it's like well they clearly have done a lot of things <laughs> that proved like they weren't right mm. so like zoom you just gotta zoom out a little bit sometimes. yeah and it's like you want to like take care of them mm. like i'm sure like for you and your for mm. your grandma so like, you want to make sure that, like yeah. she's good she's chilling yeah like yeah. and that's an important thing so if you're like oh yeah i got this this punk and like didn't sell it mm-hmm yeah, like I remember when the letters minted out and well, I had some ETH and money there, so I cashed them out and she had um, a couple bills on her house or something. And I just, it was like a few thousand bucks or yeah, something, but I was, like, I was like, and it was her birthday the day after, or the day that letters minted. So that was like my birthday present to her. I was like, oh, I paid this. Was she like, because you were saying, you know, you were smart enough about saving. Like, I feel like you're one of the better artists who a lot of artists, sadly, they made a bunch and they spent it all. Yeah. Like, was she... Or was somebody else in your corner of like you need to save some, or were you just naturally I like I was you've like, gone through a whole bunch of shit in your life? Yeah. You've seen. I was like, I want to be an artist forever, and to do that, you just need a little, cu- you just need some cushion, like yeah. to just keep. It's like, yeah, I would go and you know buy a stupid pair of shoes for fun here and there, but you're not buying a hundred thousand dollar car, you're not buying no. a fifty thousand dollar watch. You're I think not- I bought a. T- twelve thousand dollar nissan versa because my other car blew up i was like yeah <laughs> and, and paid it off you know <laughs> but did it actually blow up uh no but i ran it it was like a 2007 red cadillac mm. it was like a so like sick little car it was like fun um and i was driving it home from work in the snow or something and it just was like brrr, and then it was it was it was, just, it was over yeah just let, you're like had to leave so it i got there. it fixed enough to drive it to carmax and sold it and the guy gave me an estimate and he I signed all the paperwork and he goes, something's weird with that car, but you signed the papers. So I was like, we got it there in like the nick of time. And, um, I got the Versa. I got the Versa. Something's weird with that car. The (laughs) the clutch or the transmission's rumbling back there. It can't go over 25 (laughs) without exploding. No, they gave me a pretty good deal on it. I was like, yeah, get that out. Traded it in and got this new little car. I'd always like to get a new car. I'm always like, I I think I have like a DuPont registry Ferrari tab open up on my computer. I'm like, yeah, but it's like, one dude, day. if I had the money, I don't even yeah. know if I'd buy it. Like, what's the no. point? Yeah. I'd probably lease one to have fun, maybe, or yeah. rent it for a weekend just to say you did it. And not, not for a weird flex, but like, I'd like to drive a Ferrari yeah. around for no, I think that's no the fun reason. part. Like, I think when I hit 30 or 28, I unlocked a new thing in Turo. I'm mm. like, oh, oh, yeah, you can rent the really oh, nice cars. Sick. Like, the older yeah. you get, like, the more you can rent and like when you hit 20 or 30 it's like you can rent a ferrari and it's like i don't know it's over a thousand dollars a day but it's like one or two days get it out of your i'm thinking i'm thinking the summer like if i have a little extra liquidity or cat it's like be fun just to be kind of like an ignorant idiot kid in in a ferrari for a couple days yeah like look at me kind of i was looking at him around (laughs) vegas like thank god i didn't get one it's like at the flat tire like i can't imagine like renting a sports car and then getting a flat tire and then calling the guy who owns the sports car on thanksgiving and being like hey, actually, hey i'm 90 miles away from your place and like this thing isn't moving um because that was the experience i had in vegas this mm. year 
we um, rented a, a cheap BMW because I had this really bright idea that I w- never drove a BMW and I wanted to see what it was like. So like, why Sick. not rent yeah, it? Yeah, why not? And then I hit a pothole <laughs> driving to the airport on Thursday morning. Um, immediately blew out the tire. Like it looks like a bullet hole Ugh. went into the tire. Did it come with insurance? So this is what I learned. Um, word of advice from everybody. If you are renting cars, you probably, this is a caveat, I think for Amex users, if you have an Amex card and you're renting a car, do it through like enterprise or budget with your Amex card. Do not do it through Turo. Like, cause I'm the guy in Turo who never pays for insurance. Like, and it's like, yeah. do you want to pay six dollars to insure your trip? I'm like, <laughs> absolutely like, fucking yeah. not. Like, I you will like, not scam me out of six dollars. No, fuck no. The most important six dollars yeah. you'll ever spend. Right? Yeah, like, not like, a chance. It, I will pay seven hundred dollars to get this thing towed, and then two hundred fifty dollars to repair it because I won't buy trip insurance. If I would have went through American Express and just went through like budget or enterprise, it would have all been covered under their like accident protection. Mm. I didn't have any of those protections in Turo. So they were just like, <sighs> yeah, tow truck guy, 700 Sheesh. car shop guy. I got lucky the rim didn't get damaged because mm. they could have like argued, hey, man, like there's structural damage on the rim and you need to replace that. Mm. Luckily, it was just a tire, but I lost like 950 extra dollars just because I didn't Dude, want it. And I, I don't even know if I would have bought the travel insurance through Turo if I would have been fine. Right. Like, I'm sure there might have been some caveat. Dude, I, like, I rented a car in LA earlier last year. Turo? A, no, just like a Hertz thing that okay, I normally yeah. do at LAX or whatever. And staying at this hotel and picked up my car from the valet in the morning, went to this art store. I think I, I was going to go do a mural or something and noticed this big dent and scratch in the back i was like dude i didn't go anywhere last night i didn't like drive the car at night i was like the valet had to had to have done it right so i drove back and had a nice few words and they're like we would never do that and walked away i was like can you check like i didn't drive the car anywhere they're like no and then then i realized i got the wrong insurance at hertz so that didn't cover it it was like five hundred dollars out i was like and you had to pay that yeah, because they didn't do they they were like, we didn't do it. We make God. notes on it. I was like, you so, make so this is the thing I love about a Tesla. It's like it has a fucking camera mm-hmm. and there's sentry mode. Well, there's multiple cameras. But like if that was a Tesla, there would be a video right. on the car of whatever happened. Mm. And then you would be able to be like, yo, boom, you motherfucker, you like sideswiped it with another car. Uh, w- my wife got in an accident. And we had the cameras and it was mm. the most like seamless thing because That's there was have. no way that anybody could fabricate reality. It was like this guy slammed on the gas when my wife's car was stopped and rear ended her. <laughs> and here's the camera that proves it. <laughs> and then done, that is it. Done deal. So now I feel like every car should have dash yeah. cams. Yeah. Or totally. Cams. Um, I have a random question sure. that I was thinking about. Have you ever considered or like toyed with the idea of using anything like IYK or any of that stuff for your clothing that you make? Or are you like pretty happy to kind of keep those two worlds separate? Yeah, I'd love to do meet in the middle. So I think I'm always trying to meet in the middle with mediums and materials mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I um, uh, like 90 CC with the hats and stuff yeah. is pretty cool. I mean, we had talked maybe about doing something with them. Um, but on my own stuff, I don't, I don't know maybe the, the process of doing it all kind of on my own, but I'd like to do like a partnership or something that would include nice. that in some type of you could see like offshoot a, garment or like maybe it's an embroidered hat. I've never done any embroidered hats and it has the thing on the what's side. Some of, yeah. What's some other clothing that like cool. you're looking at, but you haven't pulled the trigger yeah. on. Cause the, the full jumpsuit was yeah. a, a vibe. The track suits were something I had in mind and I was like, looking at like old bape and like all these just old stuff and the ha- full zip. Yeah. I had yeah, a bunch of like ano- full zip. anonymous friends on the internet. I'm like, it just worked perfectly. And I was like, okay, like, and I had never manufactured something and I had some close friends that were kind of getting in that business and figuring out how to do it. And, um, so I was working with them and this is going to be like our first, like kind of a test run before we maybe do like a bigger release. Um, so yeah, we made these track suits and had the full, full zip matching head to toe. And it was just like, a fun garment to make just to like learn how to do it and what would go into the process. And, um, yeah, the, 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 all the ways, uh, the full zip is like, I thought about cutting eyelids dude, out. would be so sick. I, uh, you can't see, like yeah. you zip it up <laughs> and it's like, you're in a sock almost. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Oh, shit. It'd be like, good for like taking a nap at least yeah. or something. Yeah. It was uh, totally no function, but just for the fun Form. of it. Form. Um, so that was my first very basic baby steps into just making a clothing item yeah, that I didn't that paint wasn't on. wasn't like, you know, you wasn't puff paint on yeah. top of it. It was baked Fully in. cut, cut and sew kind of thing. So I got like all the videos from the factory where they just print all the garments and they cut it into patterns. And what sew. was like the number one thing you learned from doing the, like, what was the... Oof. What's the lesson that you didn't expect to learn that you learned? Shipping overseas in bulk is very expensive. It takes a long time. And you can change almost anything. Like the little zipper that you, you could change that to something that you make. Or, you know, there's tons of different zippers. There's tons of different ribbing. And like the ribbing size could be different. Or do you want ribs on the side? Mm -hmm. the, the, there's just like a bunch of stuff that you could do. And I, I kind of got like, it's almost like too much. And I'm like, just make the, <laughs> just make the thing. Paralysis. And let's try it. Yeah. Yeah, there was almost too many options, I think, which is a blessing and a curse again. But, um, and it took it took like six months. Uh, oh, it's not a it's a long yeah from process. getting you know the 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 proofs and um, samples and things like that to getting them all shipped over. But it was a great learning thing. I I don't know if I'll do something like that again because the friends that I'm working with have kind of disbanded their uh, gotcha their company or whatever. But um, so I've kind of reverted back to hand painting things, which I think is also more special, but. Um, it's I, different energy in the hand painted thing. Two so different. It's like I know your hand touched this. Yeah, two different worlds. But, um, um, I think for one of the things I learned with this drop was mm -hmm. like the cut and sew stuff is really hard and mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time. Yeah, like they approached me in September ish. Uh, I mean, maybe a little before that, but like we really started planning it in September, and there was no way we could have a cut and sew anything ready by. January or like the we December when you needed them or something. Yeah, so like everything we did is more like graphic. Yeah, it's not like oh this is a special embroidery because I was giving them these fucking crazy ideas. Yeah, like I'm like I want this hoodie and it needs to be like red and blue and like it's stitched together in the middle and like maybe there's like a fucking iridescent liner in yes. it and they're just like that might take like a year to make. <laughs> and I'm like oh really like I I don't know I don't, yeah but I was glad that I had them to tell me like. This is what is possible in this time frame because yeah. they do a bunch of drops with a whole bunch of different like the the guy who's involved is much uh, his name's Drew but he does like Shout clothing for other brands as well and mm. like that's what he did before again so he has like a whole production like whole fucking thing and he knew enough to be like dude you can't yeah because I had these ideas where I was just <laughs> like well you could start, I was, you could I was, start them now. It would probably be like a five hundred dollar hoodie or something yeah. stupid. It's like I'm like trying to use really expensive material. But hey, people buy that stuff, and it, when it's limited and it's interesting and it's different, if it's good quality, yeah, I think that's one of those things where it's like if you tell me this hoodie is five hundred dollars, but it's a custom cut and sew thing with good quality, and it's like yeah, sure, why not? If I'll buy it. Yeah, but if it's like oh yeah, this is just like you know we print it on a hoodie and we upcharged it. 100x or whatever i think like, i can respect the hustle but yeah, yeah but i'm not gonna little, buy it yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> there's like a, a nice kith hoodie i bought it's the most expensive mm -hmm. i don't really buy expensive clothes it was a 250 dollar hoodie and i was like oh man this is like really expensive and then you get it and you like feel the embroidery and see all the work that went into it yeah. and I'm like okay like yep. i kind of i've recently it. been just like on grailed and ebay and i'm like dude mm. i I haven't not like I dress pretty plainly. I dress like a skater, and today I'm on my like kind of like blue collar vibe. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Comfy. You mean you had to travel from Baltimore? Yeah, and it's snowing. But I've been like I like I've been thinking about the concept of like just playing dress up. So like New Year's Eve, I went to J Crew and bought like a full like preppy outfit. That is totally not my thing. Oh, that's but I think it's fun. Yeah. And, like if you must spend a little, and then you have like nicer clothes. Just do you to feel have like them. you get to be like a different person oh, when yeah. you're wearing it? I was like a straight up stock broker, and I had like my hair was like different and little. It was fun. Um, so I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll buy some clothes now and just kind of dress differently than I just have like eight black t-shirts that I wear all week long and just rotate those it's like, like almost it's, a uniform. Yeah, oh, precisely. A uniform. Does it help though? Like I spend probably too much time thinking about clothes. Mm. Um, do you think it helps just having a uniform yeah. and just being like, I'm just yeah. wearing my fucking Like some Steve Jobs stuff. Yeah. You just like put on the black t-shirt, put on jeans and just get to work. I what guess. are some, you're on Grailed, you're on, mm. you know, StockX looking at some, like what? What are some of your favorite uh, pieces of streetwear that you don't have that you look at? Ooh, I've been really into uh, Lueve and Jonathan Anderson. I love I like, Lueve. I like, they have nice I stuff. like his stuff a lot. Um, I've heard that their hoodies are really, really comfy. Yeah, I bet. I think there's like uh, this bag that I want to get. I might do it while I'm in town. But um, yeah, just like the artistry behind stuff is more impactful than some hype 
logo. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, just do it. I don't need a Supreme logo. Yeah, I I used to love Supreme. I still still kind of do, but I think they're... It's different than it was. core kind of skater roots are overshadowed by hype. Once you get bought by LVMH, it Um, changes things. I mean, I wish uh, LVMH would buy me. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, excuse the bag. (laughs) Um, What kind of bag from Love I Actually, I I know uh, more about this stuff. It's like nylon... uh, weekender nice. bag kind of thing yeah they, they um, have really nice stuff yeah so them and um what else did i buy i got <laughs> you know those uh uh bottega the rain boots they're like really ugly bulbous looking yes. rubber boots yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i bought those the other day they were on sale and I, it was like a spur of the moment thing i was like i'll get these stu-. they were like kind of popular in like 2021 there was like a big fad yeah. and they were on sale it's like pretty stupid i'll buy them for fun get these. Um, but i think i might like paint on them or something so I don't know. I'm just always looking for things and trying to find jeans that fit and things that I want to skate in or whatever. So just like branching out than what I've normally done. And I, I think like that's with everything. In finding life right a now. good cut of jeans that like fit you really comfortably is so hard. Yeah. Like, and, and you so can't important. do it online. You have to go no. try them. Yeah. I think that's a... Yeah. Um, lately, lately I like Madewell's jeans. Mm. They fit me pretty well. I don't think I own a pair of jeans right now that fit me. Love it. Like, I have jeans from, like, eight years ago that are, like, in the very back of my closet that I should just donate because I'm not mm. going to be, like, a, I'm not going to lose three inches off my waist to fit in them ever again. But they're, like, kind of, like, aspirational. Yeah, it's like, what if? <laughs> right. What so if? bring them, bring them yeah. to Madewell. They do a thing. Madewell, if you want to sponsor this, let me know. Please. Um, <laughs> Jess loves Madewell. So they do a thing where you can bring in jeans. Literally any jeans does not have to be from there. And they give you fucking like 50% off a pair of jeans or something. Like it's like a very, they, so then they take all that shit and recycle it and donate it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know what the exact deal is, but it's like, they give you a very generous amount of money for like any pairs of jeans that you bring in, yeah. uh, in like a trade. Kind of like a vampire attack on jeans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's this, uh, there's like this London streetwear company, uh, Cortez or Cortez or something like that. They did this thing called the great Bolo exchange and they <laughs> had like a, um, I think they just rented a truck. And people would come and they would trade in their North Faces or their Polo Puffers for the streetwear brands. Polo. So they would give us your other brand and we'll give you our brand. That's smart. Kind of exchange. And it was like hundreds and hundreds of kids. It was like a super cool thing. And then um, I'm sure they like recycle or upcycle don't, Probably donated it. it for, you know, whatever. But yeah, it was sick. Um, so ideas like that. I'm always thinking about like, oh, if I do like different clothes, like what are cool ways to give them out or uh, release them? And um, so, yeah, I think the ideas are always tossing and turning yeah so. I, I like the intersection of art and fashion like being able to wear art from artists you like is really cool it's one of the reasons mm-hmm. i like love killer acid oh yeah because i was just like i could spend the amount that i would spend on one of your pieces and buy 50 pieces of your clothes mm. and now i get to wear only your clothes and it's like yeah. it's important too that it's comfy like the quality thing is super. It's, if it's a fucking Gildan, you're Dude, just like Gildan. My, my day one right here. Oh, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean that in like a negative <laughs> no, way. No, 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 like, no, no. You know what I mean? Yes. Like when you get like a. If you want to pay for like uh, an artist thing or something, you it's, yeah. it it doubles down that it's nice quality. For sure. Yeah. Like I we talk about Tiger Bob a lot, but like oh, her clothing is like super high end, super cozy. It's, I see the box over there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I Shout have out. I have a hoodie in my bag. Mm-hmm. It's too hot to wear right now. It's like a cashmere hoodie. Mm. But like you get it, and it's like, oh, this is like the opposite of a Gildan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that my like my, I honestly think my favorite blank T-shirt of all T-shirts is just like Comfort Colors T-shirts, <laughs> and you can buy them for like four dollars on Amazon. <laughs> I can't beat it. And like, so there was this whole controversy. Con- controversy is like a strong word for it. But years ago. <laughs> The streetwear brand Noah, mm-hmm. they used to totally print their stuff on comfort colors. <laughs> and then, like, so basically someone on, like, Reddit posted and they were like, guys, I'm, like, pretty sure that these are comfort color shirts. And their shirts were selling for, like, 60 bucks and you could literally buy the blanks for $4. <laughs> if you bought them in bulk, probably even cheaper. <laughs> $2. And so most people were like, <laughs> wow, that's dumb. Like, why are they doing that? And I was like... I need to go buy comfort color. Like I, that was my favorite like shirt at the right. time. And I was like, I need to go buy a ton of comfort color shirts right now yeah. because like I didn't know that. I respect that. And they changed their blank after that. And I don't like their shirts anymore. Mm. I don't buy like I stopped buying their shirts because I liked bring them back, better. Bring, they, back the yeah, comfort color. bring back the comfort colors. I'm wearing a comfort color shirt right now. I, I mean, I've de- I mean, margins and stuff. I mean, like yeah. for me as like a young artist, like I'd go to secondhand stores and get little sculptures and statues and paint on them and like give them new life and, and sell them for a, a bit more. But 
um, I think, yeah, sometimes you just got to use what you got. Yeah. Um, but for bigger companies, it's a little weird when they're like, just printing on Gildan, dude. <laughs> like, you're like a big company. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, you're a clothing company. Yeah. You're, yeah. Your main thing is clothing. Yeah. You're, you're not an NFT company. Yeah. Yeah. Has a merch. Or guy. some weird artist kid that's making stuff. Yeah. Like, no, um, I've had a lot of those Gildan ones that after you wash it once, it's like, mm, it's gone. Yeah. It evaporates. I got this 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 hot piece of Gildan from uh, Hobby Lobby. I was like, I just want a plain black hoodie. I just wear it into the dirt now. <laughs> Don't even know Hobby Lobby sold clothes. Yeah. Yeah, Hobby Lobby's great. It's a little pricey, though. Yeah. Uh, I try to support, support my local art store, if anything, but... Um, for all the supplies and stuff. Yeah, for yeah. pure art materials. Yeah, Hobby Lobby, I'll go and get, you know... Gildan hoodies. Tax or, or you know, thumb tax or, yeah, blank stuff or whatever you need. I, um... I'm trying to think the last time I actually bought anything from Hobby Lobby that wasn't a frame. I've never, I've never been to a Hobby Lobby. We get a lot of art frame there. Like, yeah. I, I love to support my local framer. But when you're getting, and I don't know if you have a better alpha for this, but like if I have like 20 prints or 20 pieces yeah. that I want to get You can't framed, get them all custom framed. If, you, if I go to the local framer, it's like the low end is 300 and the high end is like maybe $1,000 depending on what I want and how big the piece is. When I go to Hobby Lobby, it's like UV glass, nice frame, Custom in the piece. So you still do it custom at Hobby Lobby? Because it's like 150-ish. Mm. And it feels like the most economical between I want to get a lot done, but I don't want to just order Amazon like $20 to $40 mm. frames. I go to Mi- Michael's sometimes, has okay. some, and they'll have like buy one, get one free. Like a like, frame shop? They have a frame shop in Michael's? Yeah, same kind of Hobby Lobby vibe. Okay. Um, but I just get these like plain white frames from for my own stuff that I just want to hang up on my wall or friends artwork that I put in. Uh, without spending hundreds and hundreds of and, or thousands of dollars, I, I made that mistake in the bull run of like, let me bring a couple Fidenza to the nice local framer. Yeah, but that's kind of worth it. And I did, and I, and I had another piece that was like twice the size of my Fidenza, and then they did that, and it was like, oh, right, your check's like four thousand dollars. Like, <laughs> I actually just dropped off three drawings at this local framer in Baltimore, like a local framer art guy, and um, I think he was. 150 for each and then maybe like 11 by 14 but night and i was like 150 that's that's pretty good for and i'll support a local yeah it feels better to to support the local stuff but then when you're doing bulk it's like fuck yeah i'm bad i just use frame bridge it's easy it's our website frame bridge frame bridge is like uh yeah it's like a more um website startup company that does it Mm. so like their thing is you can just like ship them your shit and they'll frame it and send it back to you but there's a frame bridge in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, oh, that you cool. can like bring it to and see all the frames hmm. and stuff and then leave it with them and they do it. And so it's like, you know, it's not quite going to Hobby Lobby, but it's not going to like a local place. It's, it's somewhere in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. yeah, I like that. But it's, it's kind like, of a cheat code. It's, it's really nice to be able to just bring it in and like they do it. They The first one we did, they like kind of fucked up, which was annoying, <laughs> but then they fixed it. Um, but it's nice too because they have like a lot of like support and stuff and hmm. It was really, really easy. Yeah, I think fr- framing is always... Tra- framing and prints. I- I've done some kind of... Uh, not sketchy, but like not the best prints that I could do. But I wanted to get, you know make prints for, for certain things and, and projects that I've done. But I think uh, really trying to, to focus on like uh, not quality over, over quantity. But like if I'm going to do prints next time, it's going to be like print prints. Um, I- I've really thing. learned the whole level. Not learned much, but like... The level of printing. It's, it's, there's so much. Um, and yeah. then the process of which it's done, like silk screen versus whatever. But right. I didn't really get in the prints until I started getting the James Jean prints. That's, that's what kind of reminds because I saw your recent post about Dude, it. Dude, his prints, like... It's like embossed in certain places. Yeah, the way that... Especially some of like the sheen on it. Like, it's like... I don't want to say like gold flaked, but when you look at this from the side, it looks like... It's like not 3D, but it is 3D. Mm-hmm. And then all yeah. the colors shine differently. So cool. And then like, um, I, I think of Louis Ponce. He did a interesting thing over the summer where he put out like 50 pieces on Tezos, but they all came with a big print he signed. Oh, cool. And the way, like, I, I'm ignorant on like the technical way, but like the different layers and how they stack on top of mm-hmm. each other, it almost is similar where it's like popping out. Mm-hmm. And um, it's almost like a generative thing anyway because the print has to go it's all kind different. of one layer at a time to create yeah, the full image even some of like the avant art because mm-hmm. i got their um punks oh right and like the the detail on that 
punks. It's 10,000 punks on like a two by two ish square. Right. And you can see like every pixel perfect trait. It's so cool. And it's like, I didn't realize you could do it that finely. And they, they made a whole video about how they had to like do a different printing process to get the fidelity for the punks correct Whoa. because it was so small. They do a really good job with all that stuff, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've Avant Art. Impressed. Yeah. Over the last year, I'd never heard about them. Call me. <laughs> Dude, we got it. We, we know a lot of people who've worked with them now. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake just did another drop with them yesterday, yep. but we know. That like, video they had over top was so cool. sick. The just unboxing like, yeah. with the gloves and everything was really cool. They have a lot to like, I think a lot of people can learn a lot from them and how they present like the art and the story oh, yeah. and the behind the scenes, but just like the production quality of all of it too. Mm-hmm. I was really impressed with the squiggle. Um, I didn't even mm-hmm. get one. Cause I'm probably stupid cause I'm an idiot. I'm like, I don't want to squiggle unless it's my squiggle. Mm. Like it's a, a weird... I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. But it's also like, this is like a snow fro owned squiggle that he helped, you know, make the print for mm-hmm. like, I should have probably got it, but Avant art has been really the only physicals I've been buying that aren't like directly from an artist. Right. Like normally you buy it directly from the artist, but they're the first like, and they're not Web3 native at all. Which I kind of think is cool. I think it's better. I think it's, it's way better. Yeah. Like when you go on their website and you're like, oh, James Jean is dropping sculptures it's, with yeah, them. I, like, I remember seeing them a few years back with well, well-known well artists uh, uh, outside of our space. So it's good. Like, yeah, I'll support the shit out of them. But we got like we like the prints. Put, 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 put them. They have like the best print program. Mm-hmm. Or I, I don't want to say that, but like they have the most versatile, like the way they do the lithographs like the first jake frieds a lithograph so when you move it it's a different thing so cool. each angle then they have the really nice soul screen prints then they have like the physical sculptures mm-hmm. i'm still waiting on the sculpture um, okay. i got a james jean sculpture at some point last year mm-hmm. but they're like very honest I like hey, when this- he did his first nft i don't was it on super rare or Nifty so Gateway? james or- yeah i think he only did one, one he did a full he did the fragments which are those um mm-hmm. They look like glass window panes with mm. like circular bulbous characters. Mm-hmm. Funny story about that. They did all those fragments get a print. They made all the prints and then realized they used the wrong like master file. So he signed thousands of prints. <laughs> they were ready to ship. And then at some point someone was like, these don't match any of the NFTs. <gasps> And they realized that they printed like a test generation run. Oh, and so no. it took like another year. Like, I, oh, I, awful. I, I give them massive props. Like a lot of people might have just rugged it at that point and been like, oh, this is not worth it. it. Not worth it. But James, I think just cares so Integrity much. Integrity. And I sorts. think he partnered with Outland. So like you said, like Super Rare Foundation, he didn't go through a Web3 like platform. But mm-hmm. Outland is a Web3 platform, but he partnered with them through like, um, I feel like more, I don't want to say a Web2 way, more of like a traditional sense. Like right. he trusted them to execute and he didn't come in and just like, I'm going to go on Super Rare. It was mm-hmm. much more like, I have this partnership. We're going to do it together. Um, but I've been addicted. He's one of the few artists who got into Web3 who was really big outside yeah. of it, who I'm now like addicted to. Yeah, he's great. And it's, I don't want to say it's a problem, but it's like every like month or two, he does an addition. And <laughs> let, then me get, let me get something. My wife is like, you don't, where are you going to put this? Like, like, like she's, she's now. No, no wall space left. Yeah. She's, she's very much like, you can't buy something unless you know where you're going to put it. Mm, or it's digital only. Well, then I buy, yeah, <laughs> I, I buy too many of those and then she doesn't see it. So where are you going to hang the, uh, the 23 uh, puppets that you print out? <laughs> Where 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 are those prints gonna go? I feel like in the, the bathroom. Puppets yeah. Tile them <laughs> on their on the ceiling of their bedroom. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, she definitely finds the puppets endearing. Mm. I think the best way to display them would be like the um, Spencer's poster wall, <laughs> where you oh that would be through. so yeah. sick. Like if I had like one spot in my office, it's like this wide, and then it's all it's the puppets, puppets, and you could be I feel like, like that's a, a a die with the most likes kind of thing. He yeah. should use that kind of. Oh, I'm shocked he doesn't have one in his basement. All right. I mean, I'm wearing the hat. Next pop, I, next pop up. Yeah. Dude, it, just Spencer's. That's so sick. He has the number next to the slot where the where you pull the poster yeah. out of. We were talking about Marfa, and he did that 
Um, yeah, I only remember hearing He did an auction, like uh, a flea market. We went to the dollar store and spent a half hour picking out items for the flea market. <laughs> like, I, I had a king's crown and, like, some condoms and... From the dollar store? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Dollar General... And Marfa. And, Anything could happen, you know? The Dollar General Can't and Marfa wait. were, like, <laughs> raiding the toy aisle. Like, we might have, like, a Nerf crossbow. Do you think you're the first person to ever check out of the dollar store in Marfa with condoms, <laughs> a Nerf crossbow, and a king's crown? Maybe. Mm. Like, that combination of yeah. items had to be very rare. I went to give him... <laughs> I go to... to be. I go to the event <laughs> with my bag of shit, and I get there, and I look at the line... I just sent him a text with a picture of it. I was like, I was going to give you this, but like, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and then two hours, three hours go by and I like learn I miss a mint. Like I learn I could have made a bunch of money and I'm like, what the fuck? Like beef broth goes came Amazing. out. Amazing. They minted under 0.1 ETH. The next day they're like half an ETH. And I'm like. There was no part of me in my brain that was like, I'm going to go to the, the flea market and like make money. It was like yeah. pure joy. Yeah. So mm. I fucked up this Miss, year. I missed out on generational wealth. Mm. The I'm, Many I'm, such I'm, cases. I'm very claustrophobic. Mm. I don't know if you get this way, but when you go to these events and there's a hundred people in like one room, I just kind of look at the room and then I put myself in it mm. and then I'm like, I don't want to be there. And then I just yeah. leave. I kind of like to, yeah, I don't, want to wait in lines or anything or it's like just to go inside and wait around Were you like there. that before this space or has it been something i like the allure of like going to something different like the um art basil thing with nft now it's like this huge line everybody's like give me in it's like dude why do you what you're gonna go inside just to like stand there and talk any anyway like i, I don't get the kind of thing uh, um about that everybody thinks they're better than everybody else and like you move out of the way and all this but um, yeah, I think going to different things is, is fun and to experience it, but it's not like the end all be all thing of just like I going to rather, the coolest parties or the coolest events. Or... I'd much rather the guy who's like, Hey, that party looks cooked. Like what if 12 of us go to the MoMA or what if we go to like Denny's and like sit there and don't do anything? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite? Like, uh, not fat. I mean, Denny's isn't fast food, but like, are you, do you actually go to Denny's? I haven't been in so long. I used to go when I, when we were like little broke skater go, kids go that would only like, have bah. like twenty dollars mm -hmm. and they'd have this they had the two four and six dollar deals and on the four dollar one it was a uh, mozzarella uh grilled cheese and they put mozzarella sticks in between it and i'd eat that and like macaroni and cheese at like 11 a.m before we go and skate oh yeah like, this horrible Car stuff. carb load up <laughs> such horrible stuff but, oh yeah. man i miss being young and just eating whatever i wanted yeah. all the time i haven't stepped in a denny's Can't or a perkins long. we would go to ihop not denny's but Good time. Good. Andy took me to a place not too far from here. It was like a, a way better version of Denny's. Should it was like after this. I wish I could. I mm -hmm. I cannot. You guys should totally go there. Yeah, I have a. The diner uh, is dope. I don't know if you know who Investment Hulk is. Does that name ring any bells? Is his profile picture Hulk? Yeah. Then maybe. And he, he, he types, he types in, in all caps all the time. On he's gonna he's gonna come get food with us Sick. after this. Um, I feel like. I think I've been I've been just trying to eat a bit healthy. I've been like cooking. I'm like uh, I need no, to like your, learn. So what's your go-to meal that I'm, you're cooking? I'm very beginner. Yeah, I mean pa pasta all? with some yeah. like frozen vegetables and like try to put a little seasoning or something. Learn that from other people, but yeah. um, yeah, I'll just make like a nice sandwich where you like grill the sandwich a little bit mm. and you kind of you know you spread the cheese out nice. Yeah, like, add very add basics. Bit, yeah. Like I'm by no I've means had the a best ghost, meal that I've had all week at his place this week. We, Homemade? I've recently, yeah. So, I mean, my wife's way better, way better at cooking than I am, but I've recently started barbecuing. Sick. And I've, like, grilling gotten... Grilling meats. Yeah, you know, I'm, you hit 30 and you're just grilling. <laughs> just All you do, grilling. you get married and you hit 30 and you just grill. <laughs> big grill guy now. It's a big part of my personality. But I feel like you need a riding lawnmower yes. on your roof. Like, you yeah. can't cut grass, but you just need it to, like, embody the meme. Yeah, I, I was telling Allie that she has a few years and then I'm going to get into smoking. And <laughs> Inside so then, only. No, no, not smoking cigarettes, like smoking meat. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could get into smoking cigarettes. Ali would I kill me. I want to pick it up when I'm really old. She would no break reason. up with Yeah, but no, I really, like, so it's like, you got a few years. I'm, I'm going to do the bar. Start I'm going to do like the grilling stuff and then I'm going to start smoking meats. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, got to go, babe. It's 4 a.m. Time to go set up the grill. Boring. Smoke yeah. all, smoke the meats all day. Do you kill the animal too? 
I'm not sure I can bring okay. myself to do that part. You don't we'll go say. hunt first at no, 3 I mean, and then Maybe <laughs> that's at 40. At 40, I hunt, and yeah. then I smoke it. Maybe it, maybe at that point, I think I'll by 40, we'll all have to need to hunt because we'll yeah. just be in like the apocalypse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, we might... Uh, and at that point, did, I'll be, did, did I'll be rolling my hunting? own cigarettes, and it'll be good. Oh, yeah. yeah, by that point, for sure. Yeah, cigarettes, you can start at Sports. 40. Yeah. You go hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At 3 a.m. <laughs> Before, That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> before this, when Some I was Some Bud talking, Lights. No. Uh, the, the guest on the pod before this put in a Zen before we started talking. <laughs> which which one of them? Intern. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. He, he like pulled out the That's Zen, so sick. Put, I'm like, oh, it's going to get real. It's like, sick. Yeah. I've never tried a Zen. I don't think I would. I don't think to. I need it, to be honest. I, think I, I had a friend. I think somebody was just telling me they tried it and they like passed out. They like threw up. It was too strong. You can do that. Yeah. I think it really fucks with you. Well, dude, you put it right in your bloodstream, your gums or whatever. That's gnarly. I don't think I'd do it. Yeah. It's, I, like, Elf bar on the other hand. <laughs> oh yeah. So I like, I never, <laughs> thank God, never really got into smoking, vaping or anything, but like, I mean, I, I love a good cigarette. It's just me every smoke. once in a while, <laughs> every once in a while when I've had enough to drink, it's like yeah. nothing feels better than standing outside of a bar smoking a cigarette. It's kind of fun. Yeah. But I definitely don't think that I need a Zen in my life. Or it'd be so good that it really changes your life for a bad way. Yeah, yeah. Then you, have, then you have the voice box. Yeah, well, it's like, I feel like the same way with like Adderall or anything. Like, I think I definitely have a bit of ADHD, mm. but I have never taken anything like that because I think that it would just be like really bad for me long yeah. term. I've never done any uh, uh, MDMA ass. No. I'd be like, either I'm going to love it. Because I have an addictive personality, yeah. or I would be terrified. I don't know. I don't think there's any middle ground for those yeah. things. So I try not to just not even try. Not yeah, try them yet. I, I refuse to try coke, or like. I any, think that's really smart for you, Deez. Any stimulant. I have a very addictive personality. Yeah. I started smoking weed when I was twenty. I've taken like two breaks since. Mm. Uh, mushrooms. I abused them <laughs> to the point where I almost <laughs> felt like I was going psychotic. At least you admit it. Yeah. Are you mushroom user? Never done them. No. Uh, everybody's like, dude, please do it. We want to see you draw. And I'm like, I would love to do it, but I'd have to. Everybody's like, do it when it's when you feel like it. Yeah. And I haven't felt like good. Let's do it. Or fe- uh, like never peer pressure. And like never you feel like that. Be like it might not be to like I think, sixty. I think when I'm like forty and I have like a house in Italy and I have a family and like dogs running around, and I have yeah. like a, a shed that I paint in. Yeah. Is that the long term? Get get go to Italy. That is like get my dual citizenship in case the apocalypse. Ha- like a game plan. Do you I don't have know. family from Italy? I think so. My grandma was kind of telling me about them and like the neighborhoods and like, oh, this part of Italy. I'm like, I'd like to go and visit, but I'd also like to have like a, a farmhouse. Like, I don't think that's a big I've looked into thing dual, to ask for. <laughs> I've looked into dual citizenship stuff. It's honestly yeah. not that hard to go. I think to if you have your, enough time, if you don't have a time limit or anything. Yeah. There's like, and you can totally expedite it if you have some, some money that you can, mm-hmm. you can put in. Yeah. I didn't have a pass, uh, just a normal passport until a year ago. Oh, wow. T- Toby, Toby Lasso had to come to Baltimore and force me to get it because I didn't do it. And then we ha- still had to expedite it because there was NFT London coming mm. up. And he's like, you have to come back to London. And I was like, okay. So we got it done and it came in time. And, but we had to, it was a little expensive. Very yeah. similar here. I didn't have a passport till we had an offsite in Croatia. Mm. Slightly before that, it was like, yep. I guess I got to get it. The, I'm so glad I got it though. Uh, yeah. NFT- Once you travel outside the US, it is. Yeah, I've it only does. went to London twice, but I'm like. London's okay. cool. I, Par- like London. Yeah, I love London. Paris, hopefully next month will be my second kind uh, of yeah, I, venture to somewhere different. Paris is really cool. I think you'll enjoy it. Mm. Do like you know you, where you're staying? Not a clue. Go to Paris. <laughs> if you want some advice, let me know. Hit, Please, DM me. Yeah. I'll, I'll help you get you to go out. to the Louvre. You get to go to all the old shit. You get to. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy. How is Notre Dame now? Like, is it. Because it was on fire. I think I looked at is it. Is it normal again? I think I end of 2024, 2024, 2024. I thought I read something not too long. It's ago. coming. Like yeah, I think they're still working on it. I, that last was crazy. time I was there was a few years ago, and it was like very much so under construction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to like a uh, yacht week in Croatia would be fun for no no oh, reason yeah. just to sit on a boat. And yeah, you can like so the crazy. We have some friends who did this. We weren't able to go this past year. It was like really close to our wedding, so we didn't go. But they go every year and they charter a yacht for like a week in Croatia. It sleeps like up to twenty people. You get like, I think it's like breakfast and lunch. Have you guys every been day. on big boats like that? Uh, no, not I a yacht. I think I've been on like a twelve person. I get like boat. motion sick in cars. I'd be kind of scared to be on. A boat. Yeah, so I think a lot of those, like a lot of the really big ones like this, they have a lot of stabilizers and they stuff, so to. it shouldn't be as. But you can definitely yeah. still get. Motion. You ever go on a cruise? I haven't. No, I think you could definitely still I get motion like sick. I don't, I don't no, I don't. I don't that, that, After yeah. COVID, I'm good on cruises. How scary yeah. was that? Like the idea that I could be locked in. No. Only open waters. 
because like somebody brought a virus on board, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah. But so our, for my friends that are cruise thing, it's like a thousand dollars a person for a week and you get like two a meals a day and, and like, yeah, that's pretty it's good. Like, sounds pretty fucking sick. Not bad. <laughs> if, like if you got deal. it. Not bad. Yeah. And that's in the Adriatic Sea, like in the Croatia. Italy. Yeah. I think it's like off of Split or Dubrovnik or one of those. Yeah. Split mm. was really nice. Where's that? Uh, Croatia. Mm. It was where we went for the, the offsite. Sick. The, Diocletian's palace, like seeing just a really s- different area that was built before there were cars that was built before people in America were even like right. a thing. It really gives, I don't know. It's almost like chills. Like when you walk through and you're like, this is like 2000 years old. Yeah. yeah. This is older than anything Steeped I've ever seen before. And, yeah. Nothing in like Ohio is before like the 1800s. Yeah. yeah. In a, in Baltimore, where I live, the neighborhood's Federal Hill, and down the street is um, where um, oh, I'm gonna forget the name of it. Um, yeah, I'm totally blanking on this park, but it's like um, where there's like ca- cannons and 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 um, where the um, uh, uh, off into the water was where the um, the uh, what? It's not the Declaration of Independence. It's the I literally was talking about this the other day. Not the, the um, Gettysburg Address. Right? What's the uh, Constitution? The song. Oh, oh Star Spangled Banner, Banner Spurs, yeah. uh, was like written over there. So there's like a lot of history there. And like you walk on these like old cobblestone roads and like these houses were built in the late 18th century or um, early 1900s. And it's like you kind of feel like there was like some history there, but nothing that could compare to like in Europe or anything. No, it's not even it's, close. Yeah. You kind of realize like, oh, we're only 300 years old and yeah. everything else. Fort is McHenry is the, mm. is the big fort down nice. there. And they have like all the bunkers and stuff. That's cool. It's interesting. Like, there's all this kind of history stuff. On, on the east coast over there but yeah i, I want to do the european kind of in the in the uh the ruins and in the catacombs and like all the old churches See and the coliseum and yeah just cool stuff just we we're talking about see. that the other day like somebody is like you know do you get bad vibes from the coliseum it's like all these people who died there it's like mm-hmm. but no we have modern i mean isn't aren't like football stadiums just like the coliseum no one's died there I think someone's dying. Yeah, but they get, they get like well, brain fans, trauma. Fans are dying. Brain yeah. trauma and stuff. Just, just people at Dolphins games yeah. this year. It's sort of like the similar thing, right? Yeah. Are you a big sports guy? I don't know the, a lick about sports. No. no. I go Ravens because Baltimore, but in Orioles, but I don't I don't think I know how to play. We're, we're all Ravens heavy this, this offseason. Are, they doing, are, doing... are you heavy on the Ravens for like fantasy? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty heavy on them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I do a lot of sports daily fantasy sports and i feel like i'd like stuff. to do it because i'd have i'd come in with not knowing anything and i just kind of like guess and hope yeah. <laughs> that the well there's work. like you know not <laughs> like necessarily con- the guessing part, maybe but I, there I is like use. there is a lot actually as far as like if you go in with no preconceived notions or personal mm-hmm. biases because you don't care mm-hmm. and then you just like look at the stats like analyze data and you're yeah. like this is who i think is going to win based on data you probably actually would like do pretty have well you guys ever use like ai to try to place your bets for you I've like thought about it. Like run not, run all this data about the sports and the players and I don't injuries know how to like and model it. Well, yeah, I think to... it's like that's slightly above my pay grade. Mm. Um, but I've definitely considered like trying to spend more time understanding mm-hmm. how to do that. Yeah, we have a question that we ask everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you know it, but it is: if you were to write an autobiography title, what would it be? And you can take as much time as you think. It's really funny that earlier you said "fuck it, we ball" is your first piece oh. because that was, that's, that's my autobiography, autobiography title. <laughs> Oof! And that's been his autobiography title since the first time we asked. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good I one. I can't take it though. Mm. You could. You can. Because yeah, you probably minted that piece before yeah. he gave that answer. Mm. On I, won't, I won't. I won't copy. No, you. I don't. I don't know if that'd be my autobiography. Jeez, is this book new? Mm. I'll give him yes. Some time to think. Uh, what I, happened? I Sorry. brought that. Okay. It's a. a um, Die with the most likes bookmark in there. Okay. Um, it got mangled in my backpack, but he signed it. <laughs> it's laminated, <laughs> so I like that's a die. That's a die one on one. I have no clue. Um, it's a good. That's a good title. Do, I, I have. I no think clue. I'd ask us. So am I writing the autobiography right now or later in life? What do you think? It's it's up to you. It's up for. I think I could write a sick book right now. Yeah. Um, I'd love to write a book. Um, I love naming things, so it'd have to be there'd have to be like some double entendres and like mm-hmm. du- like letters is like to me it has like a bunch of different meanings. Yes, um, so envelopes it, also, yeah. glyphs also, and then they looks it looks like handwritten letters like A B C D E F G, but it's not. And there's like a lot of different things like that. So I love titling things. Don't worry, we won't hold you to whatever the title is. 
Oh, I also use the title a little bit for the art for the episode. So each episode, I make the thumbnail. Oh, can I look at my list of? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, list... do you have a list of names that a you're like big one? Of t- I have like kids' names, like oh, names wow. for artwork. Uh, I got like a lot of. Uh... That reminds me of uh, Claire. Claire Silver. Is yeah, like, like these are all like t- names of. <laughs> it's just so funny. Uh... <laughs> I love that, dude. We Swiping go- aimlessly is a pretty good one. Oh, that's good. Uh, exalt the new god is pretty interesting. I don't know, just like a bunch of random things. I'm like, that's like you that's could think about it differently. I don't know for an autobiography. <laughs> There's some good ones. Cyber squatting is pretty good. <laughs> Cyber squatting. <laughs> Harmony pharmacy. It's like just oh, yeah. dumb, dumb stuff that you hear and you just kind of write it down. Um, Kobe used one the other day, vibe flanked, and I'm just like, that's mm. the best phrase ever. Splice of life is pretty good. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. One eight hundred smooth sailing now. That it's like a <laughs> that's a good one. I like that a lot. It's like an ad that comes on at three a.m. Yeah. after the yeah. fucking uh, cue, episode. cue the hysteria. I don't, there's just like a bunch of different random things that I restore your sanity. Oh, portrait of a man. Then there's like weird ones that are like kind of mm, portrait of a man, but it's maybe self self portrait. It's like a book you're writing. I don't know. Try try to make a Vinny esque character in the art. Yeah, if I have to pick one, you do. We'll do one eight hundred smooth sailing now. I like that. for yeah. now. Yeah. And it's, it's not, funny. It's not as serious. Like yeah. I think you're like a. F- yeah. You're serious, but not. you have to find humor in life. That's the only way you get through a lot of yeah. hard, hard like, times. You can be serious, but not take yourself too seriously. I think yeah. it's like a, that's one of my biggest fears. Is somebody's like this kid's trying to be so cool. I'm like I'm just, anybody, we're just trying to figure it out. I think everybody's yeah. just trying to make cool stuff and figure it out and. Um, yeah, one eight hundred smooth sailing now. Are there any things in your uh, twenty twenty vision board or your ideas that you could share now? This will probably come out in like two ish months. Oh, sick! Um, but if there's anything that like you want to give a shout out or something, plug, before, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna do probably like another small. Uh, under 200 kind of collection here soon maybe on a different chain nice yeah i'm not like out ordinals maybe i think I've, nice. been, I've been thinking about it i don't know i'd have to really know why i'm doing it mm-hmm. um and i think i'm doing the research now uh i have a thousand ideas for the artwork concept which is fun um but something like that i wanted to do more one of ones this year that have like narratives through them um so that might come i have a couple brand things coming up i don't want to say with who yet we did mention them in this podcast secretly nice. so if anybody they're, they're they're in there they're they're in there i don't know if it'll come out in two months or not um i would like to do like a traditional painting show like gallery show with a gallery that i'm really excited about so i think la move might help with that nice um that's really that's yeah i, I think not not too many big i just want to release some artwork in certain ways that I, I think i'll be really proud of and continue the narrative that i've already started and um yeah i think it's gonna be a great year travel a lot and um yeah, I've been, been on more of like a health kick. So like just taking care of myself. Put and, your mask on first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I um, and the other thing is that like if I do kind of uh, in real life activations or pop ups, I want to include my previous collections and stuff to just to kind of continue that narrative and to talk more about them. Because some people are like, do you just forget about all the things? I, I'm like, dude, it was like, like, like a, two them? years, a year or two ago. And I talk about them all the time, but continue to like proliferate those that have came um, in the past and help out more artists do things. I don't know. Just be more social and be more involved with new friends, old friends. And it sounds like it's going to be a good year. I'm excited if you uh, get out to LA and then I have another excuse to to do shit out there. Yeah, Excited. So I think it'll be a good year and I appreciate uh, that it's off to the races already. I'm glad I got to come and do this and chat for a while. No, appreciate you coming. I know it's kind of a pain in the ass coming into the city. No, it's so fun. But uh, I need an an adventure. Dude, I, I love when it's a really high signal for me and for us when like, our friends were like, yeah, I'll travel. Like we had post book. She's like, mm-hmm. I'll fly from LA Sick. to New York, come on the pod, hang out for a few days. Yeah. Like that's like high signal. Yeah. Um, that people like what we're doing. And yeah. This he- was my impetus of coming. I was like, I was like kind of yearning for like a little bit of an adventure. I was like, Hey, New York's close. And you were like, I'll be there. I was like, could I come on? Like I'll, I'll pull up. Dude. And then ha- ha- one by one, there's like an event, uh, another event tonight, or there's something tomorrow and somebody's DJing or some, another friend's in town. I'm like, cool. Yeah. It all, all worked out. So really yeah, no, excited. I, I got it. to do it. Yeah. Cause it's, I did this season a little last minute. I was like, you what know, what season is this? Two or three? Four. four. On, four on, whoa. Four yeah. now. It's, it's technically 
technically kind season of five. five. We did like a season zero. That was like three episodes. Sick. That yeah. was kind of Proof our of like content. yeah. It was very much like, can we do this? And then we did it. We're like, oh, we could do it a lot better. Yeah. And then we we've got to this. Sick. So well, I'm Thank glad. Uh, glad I got to. Get yeah. To be on. I'm it's glad exciting. we got to do a little with you. Man. Yeah. And this has been a vibe. All right. Until next time. Signing off. Signing off. Thank <laughs> you.